red report streams from 11 a.m. Monday to Friday. The panel is open for guests to express their opinions on news items on a daily basis and also participate in album reviews, movie reviews and all other types of reviews. If you'd like to join the panel, use the link in the side chat, also interact with the side chat and the guests and the host. Be respectful, do not swear and most of all have fun. It's your opinion, have your say and remember, share, like and subscribe. Hello, hello, hello. Um, big up to Dublin, Trillis, Pacifier in the chat. Um, just going live today to cover some basic stuff. I'm doing a quick sound check whilst I'm live. So, um, making sure that everything sounds normal. Might as well put that on mute in the background as well. So, yeah. That's sorted. I'm just doing a bit of to and fro. We're looking at the Bill Cosby situation today and also looking at um, Princess Diana's memorial. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a quick review of a show on BET called The Encore. So um, that's going to be the formula for today's show. So just keeping it kind of streamlined and all that. Uh, so yeah. We've got um, a couple people tuning in and all that. So I'm going to do a quick sound check. It's going to take me two seconds to do that. Just bear with me before I go into the news headline. So, yeah, basically today I've noticed that Bill Cosby has been released from um, prison and um, or jail, they call it. And, um, yeah, that's the update. So everybody's got something. To say about that if you've got anything to say about it just jump on the panel and join me on the show the sound doesn't sound great but i'm gonna battle on um just did a quick sound check i'm gonna just play on with it i don't care um restream when i use restream i tend to get a better sound quality but um i've noticed that some of my subscribers have spoken to me about having issues with um using the Restream app on the Android or the Restream website. So I'm going to try and shut down a few windows in the background to see if that helps with the sound quality that I've got because I've, li I've listened in and I'm not satisfied. But I'm sure that with the more apps that I've got in the background, the more it affects the sound quality. But I'm going to carry on anyway. So. Let's go into the first article. I've said hello. I've done a bit of advertising. If you want to jump on a panel, jump on. Um, basically, this is an open panel. You can just um, get involved, get stuck in, and um, have your say respectfully. And that's that. So let me go into this um, article from the Daily Mail. You're free. Excuse me, just but You're free. Bill Cosby found out his conviction was overturned from inmates in jail and celebrated his return home with pizza and will now tell his story on a tour. So let's look at some of these photographs before I go into the article. He's pictured with his lawyer, Jennifer Bonjean. After he arrived home, he doesn't look too... He doesn't look like someone he looks like he's got a lot on his mind and he and he would have a lot on his mind to be honest that's just the fact yeah so um basically i'm gonna go into this story and read it out let's get to the, the last image oh the last image is always an outfit so um yeah let's go into this let me just check my sound levels in inside the studio make sure i'm not peeking check check mic check, check mic check just lean in a little bit yeah right, right so if i if i speak here it might be a bit more clear 
Can you hear me loud and clear, um, Dublin? Any um, issues with the sound on your end? Um, if you can hear anything dodgy, let me know. If the sound sounds all right to you, I'll just um, continue reading. I think it's um, all right. But yeah, let me just carry on. So, feed's cutting in and out. That means I need to turn down my microphone slightly. Uh, let me go to the settings of that. System settings. Uh, let's see. Sorry about this, guys. I should have done this way before. But when, I, when you switch devices, it can happen. So, um, just going into my system to try and adjust the microphone. I think inside the website, I can do it as well. So, if I just reduce the mic volume to 40, that should be better. You should be able to, um, should be, is that more cutting in and out? How does that sound? Um, that should be clear. Taken um just adjusted it a little bit. So yeah. Uh yeah, so I'm back. See how it works if the feed's still cutting in and out. I'm just gonna have to just battle on. Um or oh, I could switch to restream. Um because restream seems to have a better reliable um feed. Yeah. So I've turned down the mic on StreamYard and that should have less um, interference because the microphone settings on the computer adjust automatically anyway. So if I try to go in to sort that out, it's just going to bounce back up anyway. But yeah, Bill Cosby, he got convicted of being, um, I guess, a predator, an attacker, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I've got to read the article to find out what actually has kicked off. All right, so let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Um, why is it that when I'm trying to go into... All right, there we are. All right, so I've just tried to lower all feedback um, on my mic so it's not too powerful because I've got a big voice and um, I've got someone in the back Let's see who's in the back. Dublin. Let's add you to the stream. And then, um. Big up, Red. Let me just. Oh, what have I done? That? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah, that's you. All right, cool. Yeah, big so, up, bro. Big up, big up. Yeah, we're just going to go through this article. So, yeah. What I'll do is I'm going to read the Daily Mail article. And then when you've got something to say, I'll pause and let you speak your bit. Um, we might not get through the article as quickly, but that's the way it's going to have to go, because um, you're live on air now. So when you've got something to say, just let me know. I'm going to start okay, off with the bullet points, and then I'm going to go into the main article. So there's five bullet points. So the first one is, Bill Cosby, 83, returned home Wednesday after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned his sexual assault conviction three years into his sentence. His publicist, Andrew Wyatt, said he heard about the ruling from other inmates at the state prison in Montgomery County, where he was housed. Wyatt said Cosby planned to feast on salmon, collard greens and pizza with fresh basil and mozzarella. I guess that's why you're talking about pizza. And um, Wyatt claimed... Cosby had been receiving phone calls offering congratulations from actors including including Faison Love and Terence Howard from um, Empire. And Faison Love, he's a comedian, I guess, or actor. Cosby reportedly wants to enjoy the taste of freedom and plans to immediately hit the road performing again. Yeah, because he's got bills. He's got bills to, bills to pay. So far, so what do you think so far from the bullet points? Any any kind of feedback, Dublin? No, not 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 so far, no. All right, so I'm going to so continue. Far. I'm going to go back into the article. It might be a long one. I'm going to just quickly scroll to the end. There's loads of photographs. 
there's not much work. No, there's not much words actually in this one. But I'm, I can click on another article somewhere else if, if need be, if we need more information. Let's steal so, this one for us. Yeah. Bill Cosby found out he was being freed from inmates in jail before celebrating his return home with pizza as he prepared to tell his story on tour. Cosby, 83, returned home Wednesday after Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned his sexual assault conviction three years into his three, uh, three to ten year sentence for drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant. His publicist Andrew Wyatt told the New York Post that he the, that, the, the, uh, that the disgraced comedian heard about the ruling from other inmates at the state prison in Montgomery County where he was housed and that he was excited about the turn of events. And I think this is a quote. I just heard the inmates knocking on the walls and the cell and said, Bill, you're free. Bill, you're free, Cosby said. According to That's Bob. crazy, isn't it? That he heard from the that he heard from his his, uh, his fellow inmates rather than his, his brief. Well, news travel good news travels fast, that's the saying. I'm sure they've got cell phones, Wi Fi, yeah, yeah, yeah. 5 G. Um, I'm sure he was um well looked after and protected by the big boys on the wings that thought he was their dad from the Cosby show as well. You know what I mean? I'm sure nobody was able to touch him or threaten him or mm. I'm sure he had extra, um, what do they call it, jelly and ice cream. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure people was mesmerised to see him in there. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I've lost my bit now. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, according to his lawyer, um, Bill Cosby said, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, so yeah. He didn't know what was going on. You're right about that. Uh, the, the rest of it says, Wyatt, who spoke to the, um, to the <coughs> outlet outside Cosby's suburban Philadelphia mansion, said, the Cosby Show star planned to feast on salmon, collard greens and pizza with fresh basil and mozzarella. He wants to have crunchy pizza and just the taste of it, Wyatt said. Wyatt claimed since his release, Cosby has been receiving phone calls, offering congratulations from actors including Faison Love and Terence Howard, who had previously accused Cosby of trying to blacklist him from the industry. Whoa! A lot of pizza talk, Red, isn't there? I know. A lot of pizza talk, like, yeah, 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 you know, the connotations of that. And, and the connotations are a bit weird. It's just food focus. Yeah. But maybe Crunchy that's the pizza, name of his new talk. <laughs> Maybe his new tour might be called something to do with pizza. You never know. Because I'm sure he's been sat, sat in that cell just like making plans. I don't think he's the mm. type of person not to write stuff on paper and mm -hmm. make phone calls to business business partners. And... Yeah, you don't get that far ahead in life and he's... without without being a good planner, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, because I think when he was accused, he did a he did a Netflix special at one point when he was accused. What did he end up doing, Red? Three years, was it? Is that what you three said? Three years, but it could have been a maximum of ten. So it, there was no kind of... Because from what I'm aware, he entered a plea bargain with the first yeah. judge. Yeah. And the first judge offered a guarantee that said, we're not going to charge you because um, we don't have sufficient evidence. So if you just be honest, part of the plea deal is that if you're honest with us, we'll just work with what um, mm. information we have. But then a second judge took over the case and dismissed oh, that information. Okay. So it's okay. kind of like um, gone against his constitutional rights as an American. And, and is it going to be in this, what, why it was turned over? Have we got the... Or, or... Do you know, or let's let's get into the article, I suppose, yeah, and, and see why he was, we'll see why he was turning. Yeah, sorry, go on. 
I've got to get because I feel like this is more pizza based. This story it is weird. You're right. It's a very weird article. Um, Wyatt claimed since his release, Cosby has been yeah. We've got to that bit. Um, blacklisted from industry. Love, um, the actor known for playing Big Worm in the film Friday, has repeatedly defended Cosby throughout allegations that he drugged and um, raped more than thirty women. Cosby repeatedly, reportedly wants to enjoy a taste of freedom and plans to immediately hit the road performing again, Wyatt told the public. Go. He's going to get, he's going to be rich. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. He knows. Fully booked. He will get back on the stage. Oh, look, on... look, especially that, especially that he's been found not guilty now that things have been turned over and basically he's getting out of prison, which only says one thing to to Joe Public is that he's not guilty of anything, you know? If he's getting out of prison, he's not guilty, basically. I, I don't know. I, I heard a little bit of what it's kind of, it, he was, he's getting out on a technicality. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think yeah, it's, 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 in America look like, um, it makes American, the le- the legal system in America look um, s- just like it's suspect. Looks, so, yeah, suspicious. And yeah. I think a lot of people are becoming more aware of the way that it works. The system um, doesn't necessarily work for the good or the betterment of mankind or or the American mm-hmm. public. There's it's a lot to do with who can afford the best lawyer and who can negotiate. If you can come up with a plea bargain or a good negotiation deal, even if you're not guilty, because certain times yeah. you will hear people saying it's better to plead guilty. A lot of people end up in the prison system in America because their lawyers tell them to plead guilty. Yeah, the time, I'm sure that happens a lot. Even yeah. if they're not yeah. guilty. So mm. there is a lot of corruption. And it's a numbers game, and I think Kamala Harris has got. A lot it really of- is a numbers game over here because they've got to fill those prisons. I mean, it's yeah, a, it's a private, it's a, it's a private, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a private industry basically, you know. Mm. Mm. And that's why Kamala Harris is disliked a lot. I mean, she even put some celebrities in prison. You know that, like she put the rapper Little Kim in prison. It was no, a- I didn't know that. No. Yeah, Little she, Kim. What she? she- uh, she was justice for Obama or something, was she? She was head of justice for Obama or something, was she? Uh, maybe. Um, I'm not, I can't remember who every position she's taken, but I know that she was the prosecution. Oh, uh, right. So, she, was a, she was a state prosecutor, was yeah. she? Yeah. Right, yeah. okay, okay. And it was, yeah, okay. it was a weird one because I feel like little Kim, her life was at danger and the, 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 the crew that she was hanging around heard shots being fired so obviously they pulled out their guns and um some of them had illegal um firearms they weren't supposed to carry but um the rapper little kim was uh, basically saying that she wasn't aware of the situation or she wasn't there or she didn't know certain people and she had to go to prison for a year for perjury um which is basically lying on the oath like swearing yeah on yeah Bible and lying. Ly- lying on the stand yeah in that situation, I'm sure they could have sorted out a plea bargain for her, but I don't think she wanted to be called a snitch. That was mm. the whole dilemma. So she kind of went to prison for no reason, in a way. That's how I look at it. Because she kind of was the victim, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. In that whole situation. And, and her bodyguards all reacted, and uh, there was probably guys there that, well, whatever, was part of our posse, but they didn't have... Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. The way she ended up taking the rap for that, you know? Yeah. Well, they, it kind of all, it kind of messed up a lot of people. But yeah, someone got shot. But on this article, it says, um, you will see a documentary coming out soon. You will see a book coming out soon. There's a mm. lot of great projects that's going to be coming out soon. Yeah. I think before, he, he's 83. And he's, he's going to be 84 in about 10 days. So... It's gonna be. This is like his last decade with us. Yeah. So he's gonna and everyone loves a good comeback story. And this, this is what I was, I was saying earlier on. Like, he, he, he has it all. He has it all now, you know. And this is why I think they were saying on the other yesterday, um, on the other stream that um, it was like a, 
a ceremony, a shaming ritual uh, that he went through. Um, usually, when you come out the other side of those, you're 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 even more powerful and popular than than what you were before. What happened? You know? uh, yeah, it's complicated. It's complicated because it seems to be all over the place, doesn't it? This story, like. I think that politically he could be seen as an, a threat. You know, because it's a Republican country, so every... When Barack Obama was in, there was a certain culture in America. Then when Trump came in, there was a certain culture in America. So it seems to me like America is a country with two... Like, segregation yeah, definitely. that definitely. plays a big role. And whoever's got the, into the seat of power it kind of changes the dynamics of how people yeah. speak, what's popular, what's um, mm -hmm. positive, what's negative. And at the time, um, three years ago, Trump was in power. So who knows the relationship between the Republicans and Cosby and um, Biden and the Democrats and Cosby. Who knows what's really going on? And, you know, I mean, it's just one of them. I just... I think we're gonna need. We're gonna have to wait and see what he says. We're gonna have to wait and see what he talks about on in his books. I think his books will be t um, frightening to whoever's out there because he's gonna have his say, and it's gonna be very controversial. I think the whole Me Too movement, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, is gonna get. Um, he's gonna have a lot to say about that, and he's gonna, gonna be un apologetic about it mm. and then like especially said, is... especially for for the uh the, the, the fortune you know yeah i think that and that movement got started with all of this you know so i think it's been dead in the water i think it was dead in the water before this but it, it, says, uh, uh... it says after all the stuff that's going to be released it says why it claimed to the new york post so his publicist has already got an interview with the New York Post. So the publicist is getting paid, or the lawyer. Like, everything's being handled, like, in a very business-like manner, yeah? So mm. the Wyatt said to the New York Post that Cosby has been given vindication with the court's decision. It's a beautiful day, not just for Bill Cosby, because this is about all Americans making sure they get justice, Wyatt said. Mm. See what I mean? This is all God's work. So now you know this is the religious anti LGBT. This mm -hmm. is a um, so so that that sounds more Republican than than, Republican. than Democrat. Yeah, this is gonna be an onslaught. <clears throat> and Biden, I don't know if Biden's gonna get hit with a bullet or if they're gonna like give him. A have you been watching him, Red? Have you been Have you been following him? I haven't been following Biden that much. Right? <laughs> Jesus. What you've heard? What have you heard so far? Anything? I I just I don't know. I just don't think I I don't think he's all there. To be honest, I've seen him fall down I, the stairs think... and meet the Queen. Obviously, like I've seen those things, but there's talk. And that that was what that was just recently, yeah. When he went over to meet the Queen, he, he fell down the well, fell down when stairs he, or something. When, did he? when he came off um, America Air Force One, he, he seems to do one. that all the time on that airplane. Yeah. But I think what the fear is from the Republicans is they fear Kamala Harris. Yeah, there's um, someone else is is, 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 yeah. is using, the, is, is holding the strings. Because she's got um, connections with India and she's got um, connections with Jamaica, but she doesn't acknowledge her Jamaican heritage. She more acknowledges her Indian okay. heritage. So okay. you've got African-Americans um, who are complaining about the label African-American and they want to remove the African part and call themselves American. And vote Which is fair them. enough. Mm, it's fair enough, but it, it, there's a bit I think it's fair enough. enough. You don't you don't you don't hear Irish Americans keep calling themselves Irish. Now some of them do, but I mean uh, it, the vast majority of them don't call themselves Irish Americans anymore. They'd be just American. Same with Polish or Russian. Do you know what I mean? After a certain amount of generations, when do you stop referring to yourself from where your ancestors came from but i you know? don't know if that that men i don't know if they if it's coming from a place of i feel like it's coming from a place of a bit of angst do 
you get where I'm coming from? I feel like, from what I'm aware of, there was a YouTuber called Yvette Carnell, and she seemed very angry, and I used to watch, watch her live streams in um, the 2009 up to about 2000, and um, let's say 2015 or something like that. I, I like I've used to listen to her because her accent was really interesting, and she always seemed to be really angry. Well, but what was her name? Uh, Yvette Beth? Carnell. And she, she, you, 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 is she not around anymore? Or are you just don't she, follow her as much? Um, she doesn't go live as much. I think she's she not as vocal. Yeah, LG, yeah. I think she upset the LGBT, and I think right. she's upset a few African people. So she was cancelled. Not cancelled. She always says, "I might be cancelled next week. My YouTube channel might get cancelled next week." That's one of her tag favorite things to say. But her angle on the matter of African American was that she felt disconnected with Africa and she had an issue with Barack Obama's dad being from Kenya and she had an issue with Kamala Harris coming from India and Jamaica and she had an issue with the actor Daniel... Oh, what's his name? Daniel... The guy that was in a film called Get Out. She had an issue with African characters on um, American television, African actors coming to Hollywood to play um, American... Um, civil rights leaders like such as a uh, Malcolm um not Malcolm X Martin Luther King because the African guy played Martin Luther King in a movie. So it was like a okay. whole anti African it wasn't from a place of like logic what you said. You made it sound logical. You made it sound like, yeah, well if you've been there for a amount, certain amount of years and Yeah, yeah blah, blah, this is more yeah. yeah. You said it in a more relaxed way, but she's coming from the opposite way of how you're talking. Like if you spoke okay. like that people would listen to you. But the way she's speaking, she's making the Nigerians feel offended, Ghanaians, like the whole okay. like, continent. Yeah. She, yeah. And, she, and then she's... Uh, so is she, is she anti-African then? Or? She says she's not anti-African, she's pro-American. But when she, in being pro-American, she likes to throw daggers at Africa. And she right, about, um, because there is a... I've seen a, I've, I have seen a lot of um, Americans going in on Nigerians and stuff, you know? Yeah. So I, it seems to be like a... money. She's trying to work out voting, how to have most leverage in voting in her own country, and how to um, develop money within her for, own community. For okay, for the black community. Yeah, because she's so. But they've community. they've already got the black caucus right in both parties. I mean, yes. I, I, and I think I think uh, I think the African Americans are are doing really well. They've they they're doing better than they've done probably since the 1920s you know yeah but her thing well, is reparations for civil rights that's not gonna happen days. over there it's not gonna happen over there red realistically that's i know it's one of those conversations i don't think it's gonna happen anywhere uh, you know it, it might happen in the likes of south africa and stuff where oh, but i think it's kind of already happened where they've been given land back at the whites have been which it's a, and it happened here um in the 30s and 40s you know where we were taking a lot of land back off the british and and, and doling it out to our own people i think that's what's happening in south africa now or or what has happened in the last 15 years over there but i don't see any like england i don't see the english government's uh, Unless they come to really big pressure, but and I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I don't see that happening. It hasn't happened yet, and I don't see it happening. You know. Yeah, I think the only reason things like that would happen is if they found no further purpose of making profit, and then they peacefully left with no resources left. That's how I would see, you know, in terms of yeah. South, if there was a mass, a mass, uh, uh, like. A lot of people leaving. Is that what you're saying? If yeah, right, so the black community in England said, right, we're all getting together, we're all leaving. So, and if say a hundred thousand people left, they'd say to no, the rest, I don't look. Think that's, that's enough leverage because I don't think there's enough um, numbers. I mm. think it, if Africa starts to develop a military power, then we can probably talk about. Um, resources being kept for them to make the profit from. But there's it's going to be a long journey because there's different tribes, different countries in the continent. 
there's different languages, different religions, and then you and this is it. This is what I'm saying. I don't see the private Joe Soap getting reparations out of the government. Do you know what I mean? It might go think, to yeah, go on. I don't think the private um, individuals can get reparations if Africa doesn't get um, independence from Germany, Spain, Italy. But uh, when you say Africa, you're talking about each nation in Africa, or like, do, do you know what I mean? It's that's what I'm saying because even currently, as we speak, in Egypt, Britain's got um, um, scientists in Cairo and America, mm. and um, in Germany, Germany's got scientists in um, um, Cairo studying the pyramids, and then in Congo and places like um, uh, Belgium, Belgium um, was getting all the rubber. For the tires for the cars from the Congo, and they were getting all the coca leaves to make the Belgian. For yeah, stuff. for sure, for sure, Africa is still getting raped for its natural resources. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, it definitely is. Like you know, so, um, maybe not rape as it, as it used to be, but they're not getting paid what they should be getting paid. No, and that's why I think Yvette Carnell sounds a bit anti-African to to people okay. who are a bit more wiser. Or travel mm. to other parts of the world because a lot of people don't really get around and travel before they make their opinions. So, mm. yeah, I feel that until the day comes where we've got a bit more um, financial justice for all countries, we're not really going to get to a point where the people um, benefit, the, the everyday working person mm-hmm. um, from any culture, any um, ethnic group, any religion. Exactly. We're not really going to because see it's happened. Benefit. It's happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, let me go back to this article to see yeah, if there's anything down, new yeah. that we haven't heard. So, so far, um, we've read about the vindication, God's work. Yeah, religion got brought up. And then it said, Cosby was the first celebrity tried and convicted in the Me Too era yeah. after yeah. he was found guilty of drugging and molest... I can't say certain words on YouTube. Um, M-O-L-E-S... T-I-N-G. Okay. Temple really? University employee, Andrea Constand. And what age was she, Red? I don't know, you know. But it just I mean, that, that, that word you just said word. there is... That word you just said there, it, that can be done to a, an adult, or is it just to children? Or, do you know what I mean? Well, if it, it was done at a suburban Philadelphia mansion, so maybe she was an actress... Or maybe she was interested in getting some media work, behind the scenes production Mm. work, some kind of because high paid position, and she may have gone to his house. But that word, that word, that can, I mean, it's not just, it doesn't just mean when you, when children are being affected by it. Anyone can, anyone can be MOL. That could mean, I'll tell you what that could mean. That could mean you go in. To say it was um, a woman, so I can't think of a famous woman who does media. Say he's going to Oprah Winfrey's house, yeah? And you went there thinking you're going to be a um, uh, correspondent for Dublin. And she was she, she basically might want to be interested in talking to you about that. But when you get there, she just keeps hugging you. And like the first hug, you was like, all right, fine, I've got here. Yeah, 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 which yeah. But then she she just can't keep her hand off your shoulder or your knee. Uh, that could yeah. be that could I know, be I, do, I do have that effect yeah. on women. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, so it could mean anything um, on any level where she basically was not comfortable and felt that she couldn't mm. escape because she's yeah. like, he's okay, yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's just one of them, and um, we'll never know Sorry. the details because we don't have the paperwork. So yeah, yeah. Sorry to break you off. His conviction was seen as a turning point in the movement, the Me Too, to hold powerful men accountable for SEX misconduct. So it's kind of a backlash. This is this is like a roundabout that's spinning in a circle. And I don't know if this argument's ever going to go. Because it's like a tennis match. It's like a mudslinging match. 
Who's okay. gonna sit? Who's gonna sit down in the end and say, "All right, we did. We were wrong. We 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 may have lied." Who's gonna put their hands up and say they're in the wrong? The Me Too movement, or you know, uh, the people uh, that okay. just, yeah, the people that want to hug and uh, yeah. drink and party. I don't know who. Well, look, their 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 first this, victim this is thing. after overturning it. So. Matt Cosby. Sorry, Drake. Well, the first. Say that again. The first victim is who? I said their first victim, the first the Me Too victim, uh, the, he's after getting the thing overturned. So. So it's gonna make her look like she was lying. Is that what you're saying? Mm. Well, yeah, she's gonna have a. A nightmare. She's probably pulling her hair out as we talk. She's mm -hmm. probably having a nervous breakdown. But I'll continue reading the article anyway. I'm yeah. nearly in. Um, the split court found that Cosby was unfairly prosecuted because the previous district attorney had promised the comedian, once known as America's dad, that he wouldn't be charged over Constance's accusations. Cosby was charged by another prosecutor who claimed he wasn't bound by that agreement. The court said that that's not the case. The justices found that... So, Cosby sorry, Red, so it was a technicality. This, this, it, it sounds to me like this was a technicality he got off on. He might have still done the crime, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, he might have done the crime, but in order for the crime to be effectively, um, the, for the charges to be effectively pressed in any case, um, you obviously need to take accusations to a point where there's no room for, um, mm -hmm. no, really. there's no doubt, there's no, mm -hmm. there's no grounds for, um, there's a special term for it and it's, there's no, there's no kind of doubt. There's no, it's concrete, you know. So mm -hmm. if, for example, if you're accusing anyone of doing something wrong to you, you do need to supply the evidence. And if mm -hmm. the evidence isn't there, it, then you, um, unfortunately, you're not going to get far with the accusations. Yeah. So you're, you are allowed to name call and call, like um, scream and shout and that person touched me and that person's aware yeah of course yeah but it's your word against stuff. theirs yeah until the evidence comes mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. because um, until they show exhibit yeah until they exhibit some sort of uh, evidence yeah. to the to the country or to the to the fact or to the country yeah because for example with matt hancock and um gina Col Col cola d'angelo if gina cola d'angelo turned around and said he, oh, it's not my fault. He did this to me. He did this to me. It's not my fault. We've got the concrete evidence from the camera footage that shows her walking up to Matt Hancock and <laughs> putting her hand on his face and initiating the contact. So she could have, without that footage, she could. It could have been um hearsay. Oh, we heard they kissed in the office. We don't know. And that's why someone fitted spy spy cameras in his fire detector. To make sure there was concrete, ocular, visual proof. Tell me, do you know? Was it is it true she was working in there for free, in Hancock's no, office no, for free? Not for free. That she was being hired um, for fifteen thousand pounds a year, but that was all your like your and mine's and everybody else's tax. Um, money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but she is a lobby. She. This is that, that lobbying company is hers, isn't it? A part of her, or she's a she part owned, owner. She, or over. she started off working as um, a lower level, but obviously her dad being a millionaire pharmaceutical, you know, big wig, she oh, had yeah. a lot of influence mm -hmm. to go in and buy a position within the PR mm -hmm. firm. And mm -hmm. I think she owns like a large share, like a big share. So that firm, mm -hmm. that firm will always earn her money, just like what she did with her husband's company. She went in and she just took over part of her husband's. Um, do you think Boris? Do you think Boris will so far for not um, sacking him? I think that people Boris has got a hardcore following. He's got. A hardcore I know that. I know. So, uh, I know that. I don't yeah. know. I don't think people. The majority of people, when I look at the voting map for Great Britain, and I see it's predominantly blue, 
and then there's a bit mm. there's a few speckles of red on the map and i drive sometimes i leave out of london i drive around these nice villages and these farm um countries side you know counties and stuff and you think to yourself well this is it these are the real people these are the real voices of britain these are the people mm -hmm. that matter not us not the everyday you know average joe that we don't really have an a say so i guess that's why when the referendum came along and people voted brexit that's why the results were so shocking to everybody because it was a it was like um it's a, it's a, yeah, it was out of the cities thing, and that, that that's yeah. where most of the home drum comes from, is from cities. But the vibe, the, I mean, it's going to be a 50 50 thing that I mean, that people live in the countryside and people live in cities. It's always the population is always going to be 50 50. I think in England, there might even be more city side, but I Labour let so. them. Oh, really? I don't think so. I need to bring up yeah. that election map. That's what I need yeah. to do. Yeah. Let me see. Did I get to the uh, end of that article? Yeah, that? sorry. Go on, go on, go on. Let me see. It said... Uh, I've lost my spot now. Uh, the court said... Yeah, accusations. Cosby mm -hmm. was charged by another p prosecutor who claimed he wasn't bound by that agreement. The court said yeah. that this... The court said that that's not the case. The justices found that Cosby relied on that promise when he agreed to testify without invoking his Fifth Amendment right to no comment against self-incrimination in a lawsuit suit brought against him by Comstand. The court concluded that prosecutor who later brought charges was obligated to stick to the non-prosecution agreement so the conviction cannot stand. The justices wrote that denying the defendant the benefit of the decision is an affront to fundamental fairness, particularly when in results when it results in a criminal prosecution that was foregone for more than a decade. Yeah, so that's the end of the article. But I'm gonna whilst you're talking, I'm gonna bring up the map of Britain. I'm literally gonna do that whilst you're talking because I, I looked at it the other day, the other day. Yeah. So uh, what I was saying was, so uh, it'd be about. I think it's about 65-35 in Ireland, uh, 65 for the countryside uh, population, and then the rest are in cities, you know. It could even be a little bit more. It could be 70-30, to be honest. That's just off the top of my head. Um, right. But I know what you're saying. But I think Labour over there have let themselves down in the lot. They've lost. They've They've given away a lot of voters by just... Uh, by by not being what they what their bread and butter politics used to be, Labour is it was always for the. I think since Tony Blair, it kind of it kind of went away from uh, look after the working class, look after the local town, look after the unions. Uh, before anything, be, before anything, you, you know your man. Um, I love watching him. Uh, he's a he's a TD or what do you call them over there? MPs yeah, in yeah, Westminster. Yeah. Uh, Frank Skinner. He's fucking brilliant, he is, not there? Yeah, no, Did you ever watch yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, I like him, I like him. He was yeah, he's very of, funny, man. Very he funny. Got warned. He got warned when he um, insulted David Cameron. He was one of the leading people. Yeah, Dodgy yeah. Dave, he kept yeah, calling him. Dodgy yeah, Dave, Dodgy yeah. Dave. Yeah. Dodgy. And that's when the, yeah, big, yeah, he that's was, when the yeah. big accusations came out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's been he's been getting fucked out of that house since uh, the the early seventies. It's he's very funny watching him. Yeah. And, and he's a clever guy as well. Clever guy as well. Can you see the screen? In, have, have you got access to the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So look at this map of Britain. And if you see with the green. Oh, so the green, red is cities, yeah? The red is the cities. That's Labour. But if you go to places like Whitley. Oh, my God. So red is Labour. The rest is, yeah. is voting. The rest the, is the, the, the... Oh, my God. So it's an uphill struggle for the working man. And you've got to remember in somewhere that I'm just got, I've got the map now on North Wiltshire. I've got family in Wiltshire that are working class, mm -hmm. but they live among millionaires, farmers, mm -hmm. businessmen, yeah. MPs, mm -hmm. celebrities. So they're outnumbered. So they won't mm -hmm. want um, Boris Johnson, Theresa May or Boris or David Cameron. But what they're, they're held ransom 
to the majority. What's the yellow the there, Red? Sorry. What's the yellow? Liberal or the Democrats. orange? Liberal Democrats. I'm going to go to Ireland as well. Let me show you Ireland. Let me just get to Ireland. Right. So Jesus. Ireland is split. What's the grey? The grey is supposed to be green, is it? <laughs> so we've got... Um, all, all the all the border counties, all the Sinn border Fein, counties to us, yeah, is Sinn Fein. Yeah. See? Sinn Fein, Sinn Fein, Social Democratic, Labour Party. Um, you've got one seat in the Alliance Party, Democratic Unionist. Um, yeah. it's it's really a mess up there. It really is, you know. But the thing is, you'd think that it will be back in David Cameron or what am I saying, Boris Johnson. So that's that shows you that he's not even popular in. Uh, but no, no. But didn't aren't they aren't they in his that uh, that they are a minority vote in his government? Uh, uh, the DUP are. Let me see. I'm nearly sure of that. But they've got the DUP here are all the red parts. So you've got yeah, East yeah. Londonderry, North Antrim. East Antrim, South Antrim, mm -hmm. Upper Ban, Lagan Valley, Strangford, and Belfast East. Belfast East. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big. They've got their. You know they've got a big share, and then obviously Sinn Fein has got the other share. So mm -hmm. there's not. I can't see any Labour or any Conservative. I've, I've clicked every single one. It's not there. No, no, but no, but they don't. Labour or Conservative don't have. Um, they don't have parties up there. This is what I'm saying to you, though. But the DUP and it used to be the other party, the other Unionist party up there used to vote with Conservative all the time. But the DUP at the minute is giving him the votes that he needs in Parliament. Is what I'm saying to you. That's. Okay. I, I, it might. I don't know if it's since the last election. Or the election before, but I definitely know the election. When was your last election, Matt? Oh, General election. I think that was two years ago, wasn't it? Right. It was, it so was it's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they definitely, they, they're, they're basically part of uh, his government with a minority vote and they're, they're keeping him, you know, he's yeah, they, relying they, on their, yeah, I remember. yeah they're, the they're relying on him. Yeah. yeah. Mm, they're relying on his votes. Yeah, they've got um, a, um, oh, what do you call it again? When you've got two parties running, but they've got like a small coalition. Place. Coalition, yeah. yeah. But they make out that because they've got the majority that they don't really have to back like, listen, but they do because if they don't, they do. They yeah, because if yeah. they don't, yeah, yeah they're, yeah, they're yeah, fucked yeah, and yeah. votes. You know, they won't get anything through. And Scotland is the Scottish National Party is the reason why Labour has suffered. Because previously, okay, yeah, that and that's so true, and that's and that is so true. Where, where, where did they? They only came out. They have. They've only come out of the woodwork in the last what eight years. Yeah, I don't even think it's leave. a decade. Yeah, yeah, they I know. There, but, but they so they, so have they? Did they split from Labour on on this on these grounds that we 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 if we were in Scotland we needed we oh it was Brexit. Brexit was what, and they didn't like Jeremy Corbyn. My right. mouth is going a bit slow. They were anti Corbyn and pro, like they they don't like they didn't like David Cameron and they didn't like Corbyn and they didn't mm. like Ed Miliband or his brother. So they just turned off the Brits. Miliband. And, yeah. and so so Corbyn, that part that party must have been that Nationalist Party must have been in in situ already. And yeah, all yeah, the yeah, Labour yeah, voters yeah, just went yeah. to them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they stole votes and reduced the vote share, and then Conservative grew their vote share up the north in places like mm. Carlisle, um, Newcastle, and, and stuff like that. Newca Let's see, Newcastle upon Tyne is Labour. The whole of Newcastle okay. is Labour. Okay, okay, because they're all working class. There's no yeah. way they can infiltrate mm. that region and tell them. And it's a city up there come. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But um. The majority, like, if you go to Yorkshire, this is what I'm saying. A so, lot of these YouTubers that come to London to protest, they come from these... these oh, these, these blue... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just think to myself, yeah. well, before, before you come to my city and start, you know... Try and make a change in your own goddamn yeah, place. Yeah, put them banners up in your town square. Mm, go and mm. interview people on your, on your live stream. If I lived in Telford, I'd be talking to people on the streets like, 
why are you voting for Mark Pritchard? Like, why are you voting for... Mm -hmm. This is Islamophobic um, votes. So they're voting because mm -hmm. they're just like, we've got too many Muslims, let's just get a um, conservative because they're singing all... Um, they were singing about, you know, anti-Muslim this, anti-Muslim that. But look who they've got in the party doing all the um, health, finances and immigration. It's free Indian people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pretty Patel, Rishi Sunak and Sa Sadiq Javid. So, yeah. I don't know, man. This party is just self-destructing. And they and mm. David Cameron brought in gay marriage and they're supposed to be conservative and all that. So all the older conservative voters, they, they went off Cameron and that's why they had to bring in Boris because mm. Cameron was mm. winning. But when he was just being too liberal and, it, and they just didn't like it. Yeah. Look, yeah. even in Devon, you'd think, look, Devon, Cornwall, conservative. Like... What is the little red spot down there? There's one little tiny Labour... Um... Exeter. Exeter. Exeter, Labour. yeah. That's yeah. where they have an airport next there, actually, don't they? Yeah. So it must be a, a big population. Now. Plymouth's got Luke Pollard. It's a lovely part of the uh, world down there in Karma. Yeah, I've been there on a school trip. I loved it. It was, yeah, like, a, it's nice. it was like a being in a different country. It didn't mm -hmm. feel... Yeah, it didn't feel real. It just felt like rarely. And have you ever been down to the very bottom red, like down to the very tip, where it's close to France? Go down, go down, keep going, left, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Devon or yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean not Devon. The, uh, Dover's near France. Uh, this, this all right, France. okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was there another week. There. No, but on the west coast, on the west coast, I'm talking. Right, let me go back to the west coast. They have their own language and everything over there, you know that? I didn't know they had their own language, but I've, I've, yeah. the furthest I normally go is around Dorset. Where is it? What's Dorset? the island? Dorset. Isle of Wight. You know, there's a lot of um, conspiracy parties about the Isle of Wight. About yeah. the island, Isle of Man and stuff, about, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. about pizza stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I, I was only I was only watching that a while ago about the Isle of Man and uh, what's the other one uh, beside the Isle of Man? Jersey. Jersey. Do you know what? Yeah. I, be, I can't find them on the map. Where's Can't Jersey? find Jersey. Are they near the Isle of Wight? Yeah. Yeah, it's around. It's isn't it? Uh, it's around the channel. I think. Yeah, that could be it there. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, but yeah, it could be. Zoom out a little bit. Keep going, keep going. Okay, so Jersey could be these ones down beside them. Um, down here at Europe. No, I don't know. Where the hell are they? I'm going to go on another page and type in Jersey and it will come up. Because I, I should know this. It's going to probably bring up New Jersey. Um, Jersey is beautiful. We ever there? We ever in the Isle of Man? No, nah, I ain't gone to... Look, bro, I ain't been to... Man, that. listen. They do a motorbike yoke in the Oil of Man. It's called the Oil of Man TT every year. And it is amazing. It's brilliant. It's a, like a, it's just a piss up for the... It's for a week, but everyone from Ireland goes uh, for the weekend, you know? Bro, it used to be really Jersey popular. Spain. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's what I was saying. Jersey yeah, that's what I was saying. That's crazy. So they it. are them islands down there, down, down yeah, um, gonna, south. That's, to... that's, that's going to make me start looking into some weird shit. I, when I heard of Guernsey and Jersey, I literally thought it was like, they say yeah. the British Isles, it is the British Isles, but it's the English Channel, but I'd more mm. say that's near Spain, it's near, yeah. it's near yeah. Normandy. It's islands off, it's islands off France, Spain, definitely. Crazy. But no, this is, that map irritates me. The most thing that irritates me about this map is that it's just the, the voting system we've got in the UK is just not fit for purpose. Because the millionaires are always going to have more say mm -hmm. in terms of what happens, like spending, how the taxes get spent. It would be more fair for just to have open um, votes on, sp in, on spending. So, you, Red, just... we should have a not. We should have open votes. We should have referendums. And I know it might be long and arduous and whatever, but we should have open votes for everything. We should have referendums for everything, for anything they want to pass. 
And people that and people that that give uh, that give enough of a, a shit to 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 care about what's going on on this particular piece of legislation will vote on it. It shouldn't be just down to to um uh, or two or three hundred people in a parliament building that get voted in once every five years on, on a whim. Who all know each other. It's yeah, it's a it's a goddamn club, and their parents have got them into it because their parents either were MPs or TDs, as I call over here, or else they wanted to be, and they've been in the party and they've been canvassing. And oh, I'm going to get my my son a cushy job in Parliament. He'll have a retirement after he if like they get in once, they get a pension after that. So if they get in for one term. They get well over here anyway. I'm sure it's the same over there because all our rules is just copied from from you guys from when you were here. You know? How, did you see the um, Princess Diana Memorial unveiling? On I I day? seen I I I glanced at it. Glanced at it. Um, I just saw. I only glanced at it. But I saw one of. The, I felt like <coughs> the staff were just. I felt like there was this favoritism vibe with some of the staff there. I didn't see his aunt say his uncle, but I felt like Harry was being handled differently to William by some of the staff when they were taking the uh, unveiling the statue. And then I was. He is only despair. Yeah. It's horrible <laughs> to see though. William's the heir. He's only despair. It's horrible, but I felt like. I need to understand who the who the little boy and the girl is next to Diana um, in that statue because it looks like they're trying to show a picture of a young black kid and a young girl. Why? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they put them two into it? That's what. I, I, yeah, I wanted to know that, but it looks like it could be Harry's children. That's what I'm trying to say to you. It's just weird. It's Harry's just, children you know, are babies, yeah, no? No, but Harry's son's gonna look similar to that. Um, that boy looks like Drake. He looks like... Um, oh, fuck. Or, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And the daughter looks yeah. like she's... I don't know. I wouldn't say she's got black features, but it just looks like... <laughs> she's like, not red like, anyway. Yeah, she's not yeah. fair. <laughs> picture of the baby. I need to look at that. Have you seen a picture of the baby yet? Let me look it up. No, uh, no, I haven't, no. I haven't seen one photograph. They're gonna be obviously private. About yeah, that. they're sure they're waiting for their for their couple of million off for their v- Vogue or whoever the fucking latest magazine is gonna pay them enough for it, you know. Yeah. Our magazine's still doing that sort of shit, yeah. They probably do like um, Netflix or kind of you know uh, things that people can stream, some kind of streaming kind of. They'll do like some long story and then you'll see them walking down the beach. Like they did that with, with, with the last special they did. They were talking to Oprah and then they showed. The I didn't song. watch a red, to be honest. I didn't, watch I didn't even watch that interview. I didn't even watch the whole interview, but I saw clips of it and I was like, oh my God, the child knows how to walk. And then it was like, yeah, he talks different languages and he was like walking with the stick. Like, I was thinking yeah. to myself, that kid's. Um, the way they're describing him, he's very intelligent. Like they've got him in some private tuition already. Do you know what I mean? It's like can for the, what the baby? Yeah, because the baby can say stuff like um, long words that are just not normal for a tod- toddler. Something about no, oh, did, I don't the, believe that. You don't believe it? Okay. No. Yeah, but they were saying those royals are inbred to to you and know what. <laughs> <laughs> she, ain't, she ain't a part of the... Um, well, Harry look, in did. fairness, in fairness, Harry has probably done the best thing a royal has done, uh, I don't know yeah. in how long, uh, by by getting a bit of outside uh, DNA into their family. Because yeah. definitely, you know, although his great-great-granddad did didn't he? His great-great-granddad. Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's uh, uncle. She he married uh, he married um, an American divorcee as well, wasn't it? Simpson yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. Her name was. But then there was rumors that him and his brother um, were both part of the LGB. There's rumors about that. Right. Because there was a problem after um, 
<clears throat> yeah, he never had no kids or anything, did he? No he? He didn't have kids. He liked to party too much. And his brother, he was he passed the, the crown to his brother, and then his brother got with like um a really the kind of like stern. His brother was the one with the stutter, wasn't it? Let me go and do my Wikipedia's now. Let me go. This is Tell me this, Wikipedia. just to go off way off topic now, for for twenty seconds. Where where is Ellen the Generous gone? She got accused of doing me. Too. She got me too. No way, really. There's so her, her whole show and everything is gone. There's lo there's loads of stuff on her, loads. It just it's just probably not going to come out, but there's loads. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So George the fifth, is it the fifth? George the sixth. So George the sixth. Yeah, that's it. He, this is around World War II, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Queen Elizabeth's dad. He mm. took over the throne from his brother, who was a Roman, mm. who you're talking about. His brother mm. basically went off with an, a Nazi. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And their cousin, um, George the Fifth, six, sorry, George the Sixth cousin, was in Germany trying to kill off George and his brother and everyone so he could take over um, from Germany and bring the royal family back. To Germany because they changed their name from Mount Button to the yeah Western from Mount Sex Button Coburg it was Sex no yeah. oh, they were called Sex Coburg as well yeah so basically Queen Victoria's grandchildren were beefing each other during the First and Second World War For, Second World War First World War uh, the first language in Windsor and in Buckingham Palace was what German yeah. But it's just weird to see how they treat the kid. There was one staffer. I'm trying to find a picture of this staffer. Harry's just a... He just makes me laugh, the way he just relaxed. Because I feel like they was trying to get him to stand, to stand on a particular spot. So the camera... the camera. He's not the worst, Harry. He's not the worst, you know? He's not the worst, but they were trying to control him too much when he was waiting to unveil the statue. And mm. I was thinking to myself, why are they trying to make him stand in a spot? So he just stood in front of his brother and, and blocked yeah. the camera angle that the son really? were using. Yeah, and then you yeah, see yeah, him yeah. irritated. So William tried to reposition his standing and kind yeah, of... Yeah, he yeah, yeah. He rehearsed it, obviously. But Harry just flew in the other day and did the quarantine and whatnot. But the staff were just being kind of catty. I felt like this guy was being, like, basically just ignoring uh, but if you are listening to a royalist now if you are listening to a royalist he has put the royal family through such trauma the last three or four months you know that's this is what they'd say that's probably why they were being kind to there was a this guy in the white can you see this guy in the white yeah with his arms folded no body yeah. language yeah his little snooty nose and everything yeah, looking there. yeah man yeah, you can see it a mile away. Yeah. Sure, he's not even looking at William. He's looking directly at Harry. So he was giving it socks, was he? This guy in the way. They were all standing the closer midget. to William. They kept standing away. Yeah, from yeah. Harry yeah. I see that there. Look, yeah. And there was, mm. there's one guy that was the worst. He had a he had a um a blue a blue <clears throat> shirt on, and he bowed down like to say, "I'm bowing to you, to Harry." And then he stood next to William and just spoke to William all the time. And Harry just laughed. You know, like when you kind of snap out of character for a minute. He laughed like to say, you're such a fucking pussy. Yeah, you're fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's not He's not the worst that young fella is. Uh, if, like if there's anyone you could kind of even semi-trust out of that uh, whole family, it'd be him, you know? Because he, he's real. Remember he yeah. dressed up as a, as a SS officer, and you know he doesn't give a rat, to be honest. But then he doesn't give a to make out like he was being some Nazi and all that. He's just a, like, look, he did, he, we did wrong. It was unsensitive. It was wrong. He shouldn't have done it. But at what? the same time, I was happy to what? see that he was out drinking, having fun, not being yeah, awake, going to America, yeah. jumping in. He was. Holes. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, exactly. He was partying like any normal young <laughs> fella do. And listen, listen, he knew that he, he knew. Look, my brother's there. He's the one that's, you know what I mean. He's the one 
They were like, I can do what I, I'm a royal. I can do what I want. Let's go do what I want. You know, and fair play to him. He lived his youth. He lived yeah, his youth. Yeah. He'll never regret it. He'll be like, yeah, man, I got oh. drunk. I went Vegas. Picked up exactly, Chris yeah. We're like, what are you doing, Harry? Yeah. How dare you, Harry? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just but the thing that I love most is this picture with the Jamaican granny. Like, just to know that his son's got a Jamaican yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. me laugh. I just Let me see. Like, put some smile Right beside Charles and shit, yeah. Getting a bit confrontational with people that say, like, no one's ever said it near me or to my face, but I, I, I hope after lockdown I don't go to a pub or, you know, drive to, like, uh, um, a conservative constituency and go to one of those nice kind of gastro pubs and have a pint of guineas and then someone says, oh, Harry, you know, what a blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell them like, like, what the blood clot? <laughs> 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 Leave Harry alone. You know what I'm saying? I hope I don't, yeah. I hope that don't happen because it won't be a nice day. But, yeah, <coughs> so tell me, Red, where's our Elfler from? Where's our dad from? Where's our dad from? Her dad's looks kind of Scottish. Or I, looks Where kind is of he? Scottish is he there? He's, he's in he's America. There. But I feel like her dad's got um a big job that we are not allowed to know about or he's worked right. in an industry that we're not allowed to know about but our ma's from jamaica anyway yeah yeah well, and where did where she's american but she's from right jamaica, right yeah 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 but i found from jamaica is, yeah. i think the dad looks like an ex-military some kind of connection to the royal family he's connected well they must be rich and they must yeah they must be definitely connected to the royals otherwise he's, how would the hell he is yeah but yeah he's He's successful. He's. I know he's a very successful. He'd have to be. Harry wouldn't have got person. the old pay. But I think with what happened with the dad is, I think the dad just had one too many baby mothers, and I think when you've got a black baby mother and a white baby mother, it's gonna cause drama. Um, for oh your, right. It's just. It just is. You know what I'm saying? Because your older white kids are gonna be resentful. So she's a bastard. You, uh, no, that he, her mum and dad got married, but then he oh, left okay. her mum to go with another white woman. He had a white daughter before he met her mum. Her mum worked mm. at his office. She's a yoga teacher. Then he left mm. his wife. Oh, um, very nice. He left um, the first wife for the black wife, uh, mm. married the black woman, had had uh, Megan with the black woman, and then got bored mm. of the mum and married um, another woman, and then got bored of her and left. But I don't know if... Because of his, um, because he had to travel a lot for work and he had high positions in government and whatnot. I don't know if he was one of those kind of like Navy SEAL type people or special um, forces kind of double life James Bond character. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it seems like there's a lot of resentment aimed towards him not being around or kind of being a bit too kind of um, independent in, in his way of living. Because obviously, if you're um, work orientated, having a wife and kids is important. But you're gonna value if you're working for the if you're working for the United States of America or Great Britain, for example, you're not gonna value your family over your job. You're just not gonna. It's not gonna. Com there's no competition. You're just gonna be like whoever wants to be with me, sit down and shut up, and then on to the next. If you don't want to be a good wife, type. I've, I, that's how I look at her father. That's just how I kind of understand how her father is, if you know what I mean. But maybe I've read it wrong, but that's just my understanding because I've done a bit of background research. But yeah, Princess Diana, her siblings reunited at Kensington Palace today for the unveiling of their sister statue on what would have been her 60, her 60th birthday. 60. I remember when she passed away, I went down to um, High Park or whatever it's called, High Park Corner or they've called, that park's called something else. And I laid the flowers down in it and I wore a black, like, I wore a black, like, denim suit or whatever it was or I can't remember what it was, but I was dressed in black with a baseball cap. I will never forget that day. My mum knocked on my door and she was just like, Princess Diana's dead. I was like, what? You're lying. She's like, no, no, I'm telling the truth. And I went to the television, turned it on. I was well upset. I was well upset. Lady Sarah, I can't say this name properly, Mac Cor Codell, 66, Lady Jane Fellows, 64, and Charles L. Spencer, 57, joined their nephews, Prince William, 
39 and Prince Harry 36 for the intimate ceremony ceremony at the remodeled sunken garden. Oh God. Let me see. Put that there. Yeah. Um, oh, Trill's gone. Um, Dublin um, jumped off. It's cool. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue reading. Um, so, yeah. The warmth between the princess and their aunts was clear as they greeted each other with an affectionate kiss on the cheek. Okay, let me see, let me see. Where is it? Just change the banner. There we go. Um, it's an amazing... I like the sculpture. It don't look bad. It don't look bad at all. Um, the warmth between prin the princes and their aunts was clear as they greeted each other with an, an affectionate kiss on the cheek. <coughs> Lady Sarah beamed as she held on to Harry's soldier. Oh, we've got a beat in the background. Let me just make sure that it's um correct. So add. Yep. Yeah. But you ain't dead, bro. That's you? Yeah, but you ain't dead, yeah. No problem, no problem. I need to get a quick sip of water. This is the first time I've come onto the stream and I have not brought my trusted glass of water. Just give me um a minute. I'm gonna play a quick Yeah, yeah, go for it. Off. I'm gonna get a glass. No, no, no. Walk away, brother. Do you wanna get paid for walking? Of course you do. And you can start earning Sweatcoin today by using my referral link. The Sweatcoin app pays you to stay healthy and it pays to walk. Earn one Sweatcoin for every 1,000 steps you take throughout the day using your mobile phone. Earn your 20 minute double step bonus alongside watching free Lucky Dip video adverts a day to earn free Sweatcoins. Bid for high value health and fitness equipment with a year's worth of footsteps or Treat yourself or loved ones to affordable health related gifts each month. Use your sweat coin for discounts on clothing and other products. Get free trial subscriptions for music and audiobooks. Download the app onto your phone using my referral link today. Once you have installed the app, click on the link again to activate the referral. Earn extra sweat coins for being the first to refer your friends and family to Sweatcoin. Yes, and I'm back with a glass of sarsaparilla. Um, Yo, bro, what what's that sweat coin? Fill me in. Sweat coin is um, it's basically um, a app that you install on your phone, like a fitness app. So hello, Paul O'Neill. Yeah. You can jump on if you fancy it. We're talking about the memorial and anything you want to do or talk about. You can jump on and say hello to Dublin Trillis. You can say hello to me. You can say happy birthday to someone you know. You can give us a nice. Um, it was my birthday on Wednesday. Birthday. Happy birthday on Wednesday for you, Dublin. And um, <laughs> yeah, Paul O'Neill, see you in the building. Yeah, so Sweatcoin, what I do need to do with Sweatcoin is I need to add my referral code in the description below the video at some point. Have you got um, it, Red? Yeah, I've got it. I've got about how much? I'm telling you how much um, coins I've got. It's a cryptocurrency that's not mm. part of an exchange. So it's like, you right. know, with the BNH, it's like and hedges. It's like what Natty was talking about, is it? Uh, his one. Was it Natty? No, 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 real, real. Uh, were, you, were you listening when real was on Jedi's and he was talking about his crypto? I think you were talking to him about it, right? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it's a, so it's not linked into one of the, it's not a, it's not on the, the, the open market, but it's linked into, one of the, the cryptos. Is that what this is like, is it? No, nah, this is like... Do you remember Benson and Hedges used to have the gold... Um, oh, you're, you smoke, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Paul O'Neill's from um, Dublin as well. Hi, Susan uh -huh. Brown. Good to see you. Um, blessings to everybody on the panel. We've just covered a bit of the Bill Cos Cosby um, case. Um, that'll be time-stamped. Um, I time-stamped all the videos and everyone who jumps on... There's a timestamp from when they jumped on. So if you're watching the old videos, you can listen to Dublin's um, interactions on the previous chats by clicking on the timestamp in the description box so you can get to know him a bit better. Really cool guy. Anyone else wants to jump on, say hello, talk about the weather, say happy birthday, etc. Et 
or talk about the subjects, jump on. You can be two minutes, you can stay to the end, it's up to you. Um, back to the su um, subject of sweat coin. Sweat coins like gratis points. That's what they used to call, um, Benson and Hedges used to have this thing called gratis points, where every time you bought a pack of 10 cigarettes, um, you'd get like a prize. Yeah. You know? And then you'd yeah, go yeah. through a catalogue, and you through that catalogue, you would pick items um, like Benson and Hedges, um, one, one of ashtrays or T-shirts, etc., etc. This is similar to that system, but um, they're planning to go onto an exchange or a marketplace in the future, but they're still in the early stages. They're collaborating with the NHS, the British government, um, international government, to use it as a way to help people fight diabetes and heart problems and all kinds of health problems. My balance at the moment is 806 um, um, sweat coins or 806.57. So let's call it 807 sweat coins i haven't done my 20 minute walk today i haven't watched um two of my bonus videos so after this live stream i will go down to the shops and walk up and down the street for about 20 minutes to get my double steps and they've got all items such as recyclable straws um uh, toothpicks tongue scrapers um clothing um computer consoles Amazon vouchers worth a hundred thousand pounds. I mean, a thousand pounds. Bit you can bid for high item, um, high item goods like an exercise mirror with weights attached to it and resistant training. Um, for women, they've got cosmetic products, skin products, all kinds of things. You just download that. Use my referral code, obviously. And I would like to check on my um, documents. I, I set, I save some documents in a folder. And I can put the link in the chat and right now I'm going to actually do it because if I inspire somebody to download it now, I want to get my free credit for that. <laughs> so I'm going to just quickly look to see. Oh, I've got the um, page here. It's a referral link. So I've opened up the wrong page. I've opened up a different page. So let's shut that page down, open up my referral links and copy and paste that out there because... I normally stream on an app called Restream because they give you unlimited um, hours to stream. Um, so I've gone over to Restream, but um, Sweat, um, StreamYard is more accessible to the public and internationally it's more accessible. Uh, and that's why I've decided to use a few of my StreamYard minutes. So I've just communicated with um, the panel in the side chat. I'm also going to just log back into YouTube and pull it into the description box. And then we're going to look talk about Diana, how important she was. Did, did she influence you? Um, do you have good feelings towards her? Do you have feelings of animosity towards um, Princess Diana? Do you um, do you have feeling, good feelings towards um, her sons? Or, um, do you just have no opinions? Whatever it is, this is your moment to make that be known. I'm just editing the description also to allow people to put um, access the sweat coin. So, um, da -da 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 -da, copy, paste, boom, sweat coin. So, yeah, treat yourself, make money for free just by walking, allow your mobile phone to track your steps. Um, sometimes it doesn't track every single step, which is a bit annoying, but you'll make value from walking. And then you can treat yourself at the end of the week, the end of the month. Or if you're like me and you're really greedy, you can treat yourself at the end of the year or two and you might be lucky and get yourself a grand prize. I'm hoping they start giving holidays as prizes and I'll definitely um, endorse that myself. So I've updated everything. So that's good news there. Um, I was hoping to just get through this article in front of me. Yeah. Paul O'Neill, I'm from North Strand in Dublin, by the way. Just, he's yeah. asking there in the chat. I think oh. people should jump on. Yeah, jump on, Paul. We should do a new story that Paul um, or yourself, um, or you two can just discuss something without even, and I could Google some pictures to go with whatever you talk about, and you can do a little segment, an Irish segment. Yeah, jump on, Paul. Jump on. So feel free. You can jump on using the link pinned to the top of the chat. Um, you can also, if you're not, if you're not in a position to... Um, um, talk at the moment that's we can respect that but you're welcome to jump on um, in the future yeah. don't worry about that 
And um, if you've got more ideas, you can email me at the red golden child at gmail.com. The red golden child at gmail.com. If you've got any particular uh, um, bits of information that you want to talk about in your life, email me to my email address. It's on my profile page. Subscribe to the channel and follow me there. And then you can get you uh, friends of yours or you can talk to Dublin or whoever you want to talk to and get them to jump on at the same time as your recommended story. So, um, yeah. Anything else you want to say, Paul? Let me let's see what you're saying here. Thanks, but no thanks. Data is new currency. Cheers, I'm Dublin. One beside Crock Park. So, yeah. Ireland's in the house. Big up Ireland every time, every day. Yeah. So, um... I've actually got an um, interesting Irish fact. There's an island called Montserrat in the Caribbean. And yeah. if, you go on, if you go onto YouTube and you Google... Now all Irish, about Montserrat. Yep. Yeah, I've got connections to Montserrat. And um, yeah, top of the morning to you. That's it's brilliant actually, listening to them, isn't it, Red? They've actually, yeah, well, I know. And they know, they know all the old Irish songs and all yeah. the old Irish ballads and everything. St. Patrick's brilliant. Day. Everything, yeah. St. Patrick's Day is a national event. I Montserrat. couldn't believe it. I think I, I came around Montserrat, I think it was about 12 years ago, about 14 years ago. Just going on YouTube the way you still am nowadays. And I came across a disc. And because my mom's from the Caribbean, so I'm, I've got links to the Caribbean myself. My mom's from Puerto Rico. Oh, so okay. I, I'm going across this stuff, and then I just see this Caribbean island where there are where these black guys all have Irish accents. Yeah, my granddad. Red hair, hair then, yeah. no, green my eyes. My granddad had grey eyes. My granddad, they speak in um, an Irish patois. Because, right, okay. Um, we're all, we're well, listen, all... listen, I think that patois came. It definitely is a lot based on, on a Dublin slang and Dublin uh, terminology, and especially the Dublin accent. Like all this me da and me, that's that's Irish down to it. Even the, they do it in Belfast. Even the last names, the last names. Um, O'Garrell, Galloway, Riley, Ryan. Like they don't have English last names in Munster. Right? Mm. There's oh. no English last names. All the last names are, last names are Irish. As black as black as black to as yellow and light as light, everyone's got an Irish last name. So they're, they've got Irish DNA. But obviously, yeah. um, the volcano destroyed some of the island and it's kind of been a bit depressing. But there's a good kind of story there. And the Spanish ruled it at one point, then they had a war with the English and the English took over at one point. Then Oliver Cromwell um, came into power after the... Cromwell was over there. Look, no, and this Cromwell is beheaded, this is Rick Cromwell beheaded the king, and then he there was a potato famine, and people left Ireland Go away. to come and work in, on Munstra, and the Irish took over. Oh, the potato the famine over yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why there was an Irish woman on the flag with the British Union Jack, an Irish woman. No, it the... was it, Cromwell's big one was to hell our Barbados, or to hell our to Connacht, it was first, and then it was to hell our Barbados. You yeah, know? Yeah. Cromwell sent a lot of Irish people over there, and they call it indentured servitude. But I mean, what 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 kind of difference is it when you're taking people off their own land, uh, locking them up because they had they had some kind of charge on them? But it was all bullshit. Most of them were were made up charges, and then That's sent over to, sent over to the Caribbean to make war made. Like Okay. Oh, look, the harpen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was like, obviously, not all, I can't... Well, wow, that's a brilliant flag, actually. I'm not going to sing and say that all the relationships were formed were out of love and peace and yeah. religion and God. Maybe there was some rough um, bonds between the, the new settlers. Maybe there was some good ones. Who knows? That's part of history that is not too clear. But the Ryan family, there was a millionaire family called the Ryan family that left um, Ireland at the time of the Oliver Cromwell situation. And there's a lot of Irish that people that went to America as well. And, you can and listen, this. Red, Red, were the Irish that went to Montserrat, were they, were they uh, being sent there or, or were they just going over there to settle as British subjects? 
I think that they were um, running away with their valuables. Um, what's that word? Oh, God, not asylum seeking. Exile. They were on exile because obviously there was experienced racism from England. So some of them were millionaire class exil exiles coming to work the land and, um, you know, manage the govern the island from government perspective but some of them would have been low class as well some of them would have been low class and more on the levels with the cotton pickers and the sugar but there was no one there was no endangered servitude in Montserrat. i don't think there was indented servitude it's a tiny tiny island but i think there mm. was governance there would have been governors from ireland that would have been governing communication with the uk because obviously mm. There would have been um, slave trade happening across the United the, the Caribbean at that period of time, you know. So yeah, yeah. It's just one of them. It's 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 not a negative thing now in the present, but you know we just got to move forward and just it is what it is, isn't it? It's 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 just parts of history, and you just acknowledge it, and you some like you don't cry over it, and you don't get sad. You just acknowledge it, and you just move forward. Yeah, and that's it. And hopefully when that volcano stops erupting, then more people will return. But it's still um, kind of alive. And um, uh, Dank of England went out there with when some of my relatives were out there and he bloody got the COVID. And um, yeah, he died out there. But yeah, Aww. I've been there. It's a nice place. It's a nice island. It's beautiful. Felt like paradise. I ate star fruit. Um, went on the beach. It was just, it was amazing. But um, when I watched the YouTube video, Black Irish, and I saw, because my grandma yeah. always used to talk to me about Irish and white people, and I just used to think, she's crazy. I used to think, this woman's mm. nuts. What's she talking about? She's making up all these stories. Because <laughs> <laughs> she used to talk about Emily and Emily this and Emily that, and my grandma, mm. that. She described this woman that looked like Beyonce, and I'd be like, I'd be looking in the mirror going, well, up. Like, can't be related to that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, uh, well, I'm black. I'm black as you black, whatever. You're just making things up. You want to be white kind of thing. But when I did my research, I was like, fuck. I literally found out like loads of information. Bloody hell. Man. So, so it, in, 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 in contrast to when there was English settlers on Caribbean islands, the Irish whatever faults they may have had they 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 bred with them or not they interbred with them and they they made families with 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 this with blacks from africa yeah. right or is that wrong or? i would say that the english were doing that and the spanish were doing that but what i would say is the irish cultures once it was there it didn't leave so clearly, right. there was okay. something impactful about it because um, you've got Montserrat in Spain, you've got Montserrat in Colombia, you've got Montserratian mountains or places of worship all over the place. But for St. Patrick's Day and the faith and the culture of Ireland to stick, and that means the, yeah. imports, the imports that must have been coming from, specifically from Ireland to the island, must have um, revamped the culture in a sense where it just mm. married, it, it matched. There was something about the blackness and the Irishness that just matched and stuck together mm. and didn't have yeah. to kind of... Uh, and it happened in London yeah. as well, Rick. Yeah. Happened in yeah. London as well, yeah. from the from the 60s onwards, from when, Rose, from that, since when that boat came in onwards, you know? And another thing, I've read in history books about discrimination and I try not to bang on about because I know it's a subject that people get uncomfortable with. And some people feel like they're being isolated when we when you talk about this discrimination. Some people feel like, well, I haven't been discriminated. I'm yeah, isolated. it's I'm well, say good rude. for you. I'm going to say something rude. You know what I mean? But but most of us haven't been discriminated against. You know, most of us haven't. But culturally, there are some people who can't find their. They feel left out when these conversations are being had. Yeah. Like, what? What do you mean? You're talking like yeah, I know how to mean. respond. I know what you mean. But one thing I will say is, I did research at university on um, like the origins of the word race and blah 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 blah. And in my research, I found out that the Irish were deemed as um, racial. Oh, racial we were always a lower. Yeah, 
We were like, all they called the blacks of Europe, and they had like these horrible racist cartoons and newspapers, and like these. There's a brilliant film. Uh, it's and called The Commitment. Yeah, uh, I've it's seen called that The Commitment. Commitments. I've seen that. I love yeah, that. have you? That. And your man, you know your man that it's based on, right? He's saying, well. Or the Irish were always considered the blacks of Europe. Yes. And Dublin was... are considered the blacks of Ireland. <laughs> it's just a great uh, line wow. out of the film. When he said that line, I never read the book. So I'm watching that film just laughing, thinking, oh, I like this film. That's a funny line. But when I yeah. actually looked into the history of it and saw yeah. the yeah. pictures, my mouth dropped open. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? I don't know what to think anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was just like, my whole life has changed. I'm finding out shit about this country I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And your man that, that don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, your man that wrote that, he lives down the road from me, man. The punk Doyle. Roddy Doyle. Oh is yeah, Roddy Doyle, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, read, yeah. I read the book and I watched the film. I, I borrowed the book oh, from oh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I read it from because yeah. I don't really read. Like I read, mm. but, but well that that time. It has to be entertaining. Yeah. yeah. It has but to it had to be like something yeah. I could get my head around. And yeah. his yeah. way of writing. I was just t turning the page, turning the page, turning the page, yeah, turning the page. Yeah. Then I just went and watched the film like as well, because Erica Badu is in the Blue B Blues by the Blue, look, the Blues Brothers, and she, uh, no, the commitments is different to the Blues Brothers, but I was watching similar films ar ar around mm, the same time. Mm. Shit. Yeah, great music in that film. Yeah. The commitments, great music. Oh, yeah. the, the conversations is random, you know, like. I'm going to have to change the description to add in Ireland and all this stuff, because that's what I do. After I upload the video, I'll be like, yeah, Dublin join the panel, 10 minutes or 30 seconds, and someone can mm -hmm. click on it and fast forward just to you talking, or they can fast forward to the Diana bit, or they can fast forward to the... Yeah, 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 yeah. So they don't have to watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. people might want to watch the whole thing, but I just want people to just digest it in a... In a yeah, whichever way they want, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe... um. Read some of this Diana article and yeah, see go what we can get from this story. See if they're telling the truth or if they're being disrespectful. So, Harry and Wills kissed for their aunts. Princes greet Diana's sisters, Lady Sarah McCordale, McCordale and Lady Jane Fellows, as they join El Spencer to unveil statue of their mother at Kensington Palace. I'm not going to read the bullet points because often with the Daily Mail, what they do is they repeat the bullet points inside the story and it becomes frustrating when I'm reading it twice. So I'm just going to read the, the text. Princess Diana's siblings reunu reunited at Kensington Palace today for the unveiling of their sister's statue on what would have been her 60th birthday. Lady Sarah McCordell, Dell, I can't say it properly, 66, Jane, Lady Jane Fellow, 64, and Charles Earl Spencer, 57, join their nephews, Prince William, 39, and Prince Harry, 36, for the intimate ceremony in the remodelled sunken garden. The warmth between the princes and their aunts was clear as they greeted each other with an affectionate kiss on the cheek. Lady Sarah beamed as she held onto Harry's shoulder and appeared to whisper something in his ears. Later, Prince Harry, who appeared excited throughout the event, smiled widely as he shared a light-hearted moment with his aunt and his uncle Charles. It is not known when the Duke of Sus Sussex will last saw, sorry, it's not known when the Duke of Sussex last saw his aunt and uncle. He was last photographed with Lady Sarah and Lady Jane at his son's Archie's christening in 2009. Okay, I'll just um, get to that picture. Yeah, I like this picture. And I'll go back to the article. 2019. Um, the brothers have stayed close with their aunt and uncle. All three of Diana's siblings were... Tell me the Spencers, yeah. Yeah, the Spencers. Yeah. Mm. All three were guests at both Harry and Will William's weddings, while they were also included on the guest lists of just 25 at Archie's christening. So there, yeah, they're close to their, of course they're going to be close to their to their mum's family. And that's probably what gives them a bit of balance, if I'm going to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Definitely. Give them a bit of real... But the Spencers were a royal family at one stage as well, Red. So I don't know how fucking... Oh, sorry, excuse me. I don't know how um I don't know how far from from uh blue nose that they are, you know. They're they're Winston Churchill's nieces. The Spencer, did these I think uh, Diana and Diana, I think that's her granddad. All right, I'm okay. Winston Church. I know, I know that, that 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 family were royal at one stage, so weren't they, the Spencers? Um, I'm not sure of it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm just doing a quick search to do a bit quick background check. Let me just find out. Father, who is Diana Churchill? Winston Churchill's daughter, siblings, children, um, uh, yeah, mother, Bar- Baroness Spencer Churchill. So his mother was mm. um, Spencer, family, Fa- father, Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill went out with Baroness, married, wait, Diana Churchill, they're related. I can't work this out now. Father Winston Churchill, Mother Baroness Spencer Churchill, Clementine Churchill. Siblings, Mary Gold Mary, Rudolph, Sarah, children. Who is she? Childhood, early life, career, personal life. This is another Diana, but I've just typed in Diana and I didn't realise there was a Diana Churchill. No way, it's a different Diana Spencer. Yeah. I should type in Winston Churchill, Princess Diana. That's what I need to type in. Was Princess Diana related to Winston Churchill? Princess Diana might have married into the royal family, but her own family lineage is quite impressive. The late princess, who was born Diana Spencer, came from one of the most distinguished... I better share this screen. Shall I just read it out? Yeah, read it Came from one of the most distinguished aristocratic families in the United Kingdom. The Spencer family dates all the way back to the 15th century and many members held prominent roles in history and, as it turns out, in the royal family. Was Princess Diana related to Winston Churchill? Find out more about her heritage and lineage ahead. Who was Winston Churchill? We know that. Was Princess Diana related to Winston Churchill? As a member of the Spencer family, Princess Diana was related to a lot of prominent people in history, but was Princess Diana related to Winston Churchill? According to Princess Diana's family tree, the late princess and former prime minister were distant cousins and shared some of the same relatives. Two, the two were allegedly related to a man named Charles Spencer, born 1675 to 1722 who was the Earl of Sunderland, and his wife, Lady Anne Spencer, whose maiden name was Churchill. Churchill. The, cu- yeah. the couple was Winston Churchill. Jesus great, Christ. great, 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 great grandparent. And Princess <laughs> Diana's great, 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 great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, how did how serious they take it over there, Yeah. How did Winston Churchill end up with his great, 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 great grandmother's maiden name? His great grandfather, George Spencer, the fifth Duke of Marlborough, added Churchill to his name in 1817 to highlight his family's history and to add connection to his prominent great, great grandfather. George so, that's how Churchill. What? So they lost her. So George they, Winston Churchill they lost the Spencer part. His great grandfather, George Spencer, added his name. So Winston Churchill's great grandfather was keeping a certain branch of his family connected to the royal. Yeah, family. and then they lost the Spencer part though. But then it says yeah. George Spencer changed 
the family name to Spencer Churchill, and as it turns out, it remains that way today. The, the, oh, that so said, it's Spencer Churchill, right? Yeah, okay. That said, some of its members, such as Winston Churchill, prefer to drop Spencer and just go as Churchill. Mm. So they're they're a divisive, they're a dual, they're a dual identity, like the Mount Button mm. Windsors. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's how you have to move, and you have to be, you have to have two mm. identities. To, um, in those days, there was a lot of civil war, and um, remember things like World War and the Second World War; those were in the pipeline because there was a lot of conflict over the Suez Canal and world territories in Africa and in America and development of the world territories and the boundaries. So they knew that they had to be able to just run away for a couple of years if a war kicked yeah. off and change. The and and even even bringing that to back to a local level, I know I know a lot of guys in town that use their mother's names for things like that. You know, for things like that when they're when they're going up to talk to county council or stuff. You know, or police. Or... And then there's a question here: Was Princess Diana a commoner? before marrying Prince Charles. Technically speaking, Princess Diana was a commoner before marrying into the royal family. However, her aristocratic lineage and long family history of dukes and earls yeah. and the former she Prime was, Minister of the United Kingdom says otherwise. And as she wasn't a normal commoner. Princess put it that way. Diana was not that common. Well, obviously, the Queen Mother knew Winston Churchill, wasn't it? Yeah. One of them. So, and the Queen Mother was very close. I watch documentaries on YouTube all the time. The Queen Mother re like highly respected Diana's mum. So when right. Diana started cheating on Charles, the Queen Mother was her work number one enemy. It's said, um, it's allegedly it said behind the scenes in the gossip and the and the conspiracy theories that that was the wrong um, royal person to upset because she um, took it. She didn't like divorce. And I don't think um, divorce is on the cards for the Queen Mother because she hustled her way into that royal family. And, you know what I mean? She took her position in the royal family super seriously and she married a man that she didn't technically love and she gave them kids. So she felt that if she could do that, all these other women should be the same. You know yeah. Saying? So yeah. that's the one that people kind of point the finger to when it comes to, like, accidents and stuff. But anyway... Um, Harry and William put aside their personal differences and stood shoulder to shoulder to unveil the bronze statue of their mother in the sunken garden, which became the place of solace. So let's go back to this statue. And I'll go to that picture there. Um, which became a place of solace for Diana before her death in 1997. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> They put the statue where Diana used to sit. The garden was replanted with 4,000 of Diana's favourite flowers in honour of the event. How do they know what her 4,000 favourite flowers are? 4,000 favourite flowers? Yeah, it's just a bit. It's just a bit. Is that what you said? 4,000 of her favourite flowers. So they must have had to, when she was alive. Maybe it's documented, must... yeah. Yeah. Maybe she had to do like tasks. Yeah, tasks. she would have had to do all that bullshit. What else are you gonna do when you're a royal only? All of that type of crap. What's your favorite? Log your life Adam? in every way. Yeah, innit? What's your favorite shoe, mm. Adam? What's your favorite flower? Oh, she liked this. But then I guess it represents femininity as well. It's all a bit girly and right mm. like it's all a bit kind of gone with the wind and the fairies and all that. Um, there's a little bit left at the bottom. I, f I feel like it's just a publicity. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, it's it's more for the royal family than for Diana. Yeah. But there definitely is that is definitely is a black child, and I'm, this is why I'm re reading the article because I want to know like, what are they? What is it? Yeah, what definitely the definitely the 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 young fella definitely has um black hair. Definitely. Yeah. So the statue of Princess Diana by the artist Ian Rank Broadley in the sunken garden at Kensington Palace. The bronze statue depicts the princess surrounded by three children to represent the universality and generational impact of her work. Her short cropped hair 
style of dress and portrait are based on the final period of her life. Beneath the statue is a plinth ingrained with her name and the date of the unveiling. What does the plinth and say? It just says print Diana Prince. When she died? Oh, okay. And yeah, it just says Diana. It's basically calling her a princess, even though technically um, the Queen Mother didn't want her to be have that title. And um, that's why all the flowers... That, I went down to put flowers down outside that gate. I remember that day. It was crazy. Like it just When seemed, she died? It didn't... Yeah, when she died, it didn't seem real. Like, me and my mum jumped on the train, we went to the shop, got some flowers. Because my mum knew I loved Diana, innit? Because I used to be like, oh, she's so good. She's always helping people. Like, my mum knew I yeah. was just like... Which is true. Like, she was. Yeah. Um... She was down so there and people were just in tears. It was nuts. It was crazy. Like, there, there was no... You know how English people can be a bit catty and a bit mean and yeah, a bit yeah. snobby sometimes? Mm. No, nah, that day it was like everybody got dumped. That is exactly how it feels. Like, everybody just got dumped and we just found out we got cheated on and dumped and we couldn't work out what, what to say or what to do. And we just... It, there was just... Millions I remember it. I remember it myself. Millions. I remember. I think I was about like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, similar age. But um, the plinth says engraved with her name and date of the unveiling, and in front of is a paving stone engraved with an a extract inspired by the Measure of a Man poem on July. 1st 2021 in England today would have been the 60th birthday of Princess Diana who died in 1997 at the ceremony here today her sons Prince William Duke of Cambridge and Prince Harry Duke of Sussex unveiled a statue in her memory that's quite an, uh, yeah it's quite um a big deal it's quite a big i didn't hear what you said at the end there what you say at the end it said it just basically um the plaque just stated the fact that today happened. It, like, it, it's oh, like, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that we, 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 we unveiled this, this memorial for, for yeah, Diana like on July this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, yeah. been 60. And it, it obviously, because his daughter, Harry's daughter is never going to, well, none of their granddaughters got to meet her. And they've mm. got Camilla around, Camilla around them. Yeah. And I just feel awesome. like they needed time away from Charles, away from Camilla, just to kind mm. of come back to basics and think and honor their mother because they've got, they've both got daughters, they've both got children yeah. that will have resemble resemblances to their to their mum, you know. Especially, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the statue made by Ian Rank Broadley shows Diana with her arms around two children and towered over the brothers as they revealed it to the world this afternoon during the engagement. Harry clapped his hands of excitement before the sculpture was revealed. William appeared far more serious during the short ceremony and the awkward walk to the sunken garden. At the In, the, in a joint statement released this afternoon, the brother said, every day we wish she were still with us and our hope is that this statue will be seen forever as a symbol of her life and her legacy. They added, today, on what would have been our mother's 60th birthday, we remember her love, strength and character, qualities that made her a force for good around the world, changing countless lives for the, for the better. Thank you to Ian Rank, Brody, Pip Morrison and their teams for their outstanding work, to the friends and donors who helped make this happen, and to all those around the world who keep our mother's memory alive. Yeah, the sunken gardens designer Pip Morrison was stood nearby, and she could be overheard telling the royal brothers it's a collaborative effort. When the two dukes got into place either side of the statue, William said, "Ready!" before they pulled off the cloth, and the guest appl um, applauded. Yeah, man. We need unity in the house, man. All this sibling rivalry and all this rubbish about. Like, fair enough, William's going to be the king.
king one day and you know what I mean? I think that's why Harry got out of Dodge, to be honest with you. To to keep to keep his relationship with his brother. Yeah. I'm thinking what it went down too well. I think he just kept out of the way just while they prep him up for that position. He's got yeah. years to go. Charles is going to be empowered. I think Charles is going to live. Uh, look, what do you think Charles is going to live? Is not. Uh, I think he's going to have to abdicate, to be honest with you. I don't see that. Because Charles's story, if Charles is, um, let's say Charles's grandma was the one who involved herself in, she involved herself in the, in the um, ar arrangement of the marriage. Yeah. Lord Mountbatten, mm -hmm. And the Queen Mother were, were very hands on with Prince Charles whilst um, Queen Elizabeth. I see. Look, if you if you if you watch, did you watch that thing on Netflix? What the the Crown? Yeah. No. Right. Well, it seems they they portrayed Charles, and I I'm sure that royal family had a lot of input into that. They portrayed Charles as a, a complete moron and a punts but that's what my, i've watched documentaries where they focus on charles's upbringing and lord mountbatten was a dodgy character he was yeah called, i know um, we blew him up yeah i don't want to say <laughs> <laughs> we oh, did though <laughs> um well 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 i don't know how to say <laughs> But it was a bit of a kind of um, it was a bit of a. It seemed a bit cryptic the way it seemed like it was on the table, like it was on the cards. Do you get where I'm going with that? It seemed like it was gonna be, like it was set up maybe because they couldn't really keep his public image the way they wanted to keep it. Because no, 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 out. no, we blew him up. You think? He just was just doing stuff. I feel like he was part of it. I feel like he planned his own demise. Like he knew. I felt <laughs> like he, he wanted to get away. But, but anyway, long story short, Charles... No, mom, go ahead with that one. When Charles's, he... when Charles's mum became queen, her dad died. Like, as soon as her dad became king, he died of like... um like a stomach problem, either to do with drinking or to do with something to do with his stomach mm. or his bum. He had something to do, like, um, what do they call it? Uh, Crohn's disease, yeah? He had Crohn's, Crohn's disease. Crohn's, yeah, yeah, okay. And he, yeah. He, he couldn't, he kept going to the toilet all the time. And he, he couldn't yeah, talk to yeah. people and he was leaving Shit it. And, blood, and, he, was, yeah, and yeah. he was softly spoken. And he wasn't, he didn't really feel like he was supposed to be the king, if you get what I mean. He, yeah, yeah, mom, he was he was never he was never he was never um, he was never taught the role. It was always his brother that was gonna be king. So it'd be a bit bit like Harry having to if William died sudden. Him and his brother <laughs> wanted to live a rock and roll lifestyle and go to America, smoke the cars, sleep around. They didn't see yeah. the point of learning Latin and being prim and proper because their mother. Um, married in and she took it seriously but her husband who was the bloodline kind of took a back seat so when they'd go to India and see their subjects she understood how the, the concept of power and that you have to keep going and waving hands and you have to be seen and you have to do these photo opportunities because photography was new yeah before the photography came out royal families could just act however they wanted but his mm. um, yeah uh, yeah the, the woman who um I'm losing track. Queen Mary, she understood the power of public relations. So her sons were just a bit uncouth. So when mm. um, Prince, when the Queen Mother came through, Queen Mary loved the Queen Mother because she was like, you are just like me. You are battle axe. You're all about appearances. You'll have a baby of a man you don't love. You can do this. You're good. Yeah. Mm. And then the Queen Mother came in and she was trying to promote her daughter because she knew her husband was getting sickly, she was trying to promote her daughter to take over that role. Like, because she was a girl and she was the, it was a bit controversial for a woman to be the queen. You know what I'm saying? But they just ran with it and they changed the rules around. So when she was being going to South Africa to make a speech and pledge her alliance to the 
royal family and pledge her alliance to the empire. When she came back from South um, Africa, she came back on a plane and she found out on the plane that her dad died and then she had to do the coronation. She didn't have time to be a mummy, mummy, mummy to Prince mm. um, Charles. She didn't have time for it. And her mum didn't want her to get soft. So Prince Charles was off with nannies and Lord Mountbatten. And that's why people say he's a bit ditzy and a bit soft and a bit of a mummy boy and a bit of a, a, a pansy, yeah? But I believe that when, when he gets given that position, because it, it's going to look too corrupt and a too Illuminati-fied if it goes straight to William. What they'll do is they'll give it to Charles, but if he does stuff that they don't like, William might bonk him off or he might bonk himself off or he might end up in a truck in Northern Ireland and it might just blow up, who knows? <laughs> But he's gonna have that crown. His face is gonna be on the money. But you he think? might be, yeah. He just might be like one of the older men in the family that died quick. Because Queen mm. Elizabeth is the longest reigning monarch in history. But a lot mm. of the men before her had five years, four years, ten. Right. Years. Okay. They, they were drinkers and smokers, and they were doing heroin mm. and mm. cocaine and smoking weed and yeah. doing all kinds yeah. of stuff. You know what I mean? So, and mm. they, they, they just about had radio at one point when you could hear mm. um, Albert speak and he did, the, uh, he did a Christmas message. Then photography came in and now with Harry and William, it's t broadcasting online internet. So they, yeah. these two are the most powerful ones because they understand radio, photography, online, social media. And mm. that's why Harry is a competition for William and people are scared of him because he's got more leadership skills and more, he's a bit more charismatic. Do you ever think, skills. Red, do you ever think, uh, do, do you ever think that they're holding on in there for some hope that things will revert to some sort of old ways where they still, where they will be back in complete control? I think that they're there to hold on to India, to hold on to South Africa, to hold on to the territories in the Commonwealth. That is mm. their job. If okay. the Commonwealth start doing referendums to go to put, become republic, they're gonna have to. Um, it's gonna affect their military influence, their traditional influence, their cultural influence, and this is where the ethnats and the uh, um, the right-wing nationalists, they are blinded by the um, the role of the, the royal family. The left-wingers don't care. People that are a bit more moderate don't care because they don't really care about the power of the British Empire. But the nationalists, who are proud to be British, mm, they're not really yeah. proud of the Commonwealth or the, 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 what the royal family, the territories that the royal family holds. So there's like a conflict, like almost like a civil war, in, in, in the United Kingdom at the moment because people can't mm. connect with the purpose that the royal family stand for and the way that they're becoming more modern. But William, I think, William needs Charles to be the full guy before he takes over. If William goes in straight away, he will become the full guy and his son, George, I don't think his son has got it. It's too early to say, but I don't think that would be... His son needs training. His son went to the Euros. He watched the football. They're talking to him about one day you're going to be king. I think William's Why is son, he? he's probably about six or seven. I don't know um, for sure, but he's young. Mm. He's about yeah, 10, yeah, maybe yeah. 10, 8, 9, 10. They've got, because he's growing up in the social media age of TikTok and all that, and his privacy, they're going to have to talk to him about privacy, guarding your privacy. They've got to marry him off. They've got to do all kinds of things. They've changed the rules. So if he turns out to be gay, he can have a, a husband. Or if one of their kids turns out funny, they can have a lesbian or gay king. So they've already changed that rule. William changed that around and um, the queen. They changed that when William had his first child. So they're just trying to position themselves. But Charles needs to go in and die before William takes over. Otherwise, it's going to be handed to him on a plate. And he's not going to have that level of national support that he would get if his dad steps in, fucks up, and then dies. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. But, yeah. yeah. But Paul O'Neill's dishing it out in the comment section. I'll just cut some of his... What's he saying? He said, um, 
Some of the stuff you said I can't really say on the stream because they might. Oh, All right. <laughs> oh, shit. So I'm just, I'm just showing the video. <laughs> he said something about sponges. Then he said. Um, oh man. Revealing. Oh, I know. Yeah. Two, okay. Two, two, pil um, two pillars, three characters in the statue. He's just saying what he's got to say. Like some people are Republicans. He's going in Republicans. on. He's going in on the royals. Which he has a right to, you know. He's Irish. Yeah, everyone's got a right to on it. On yeah, exactly, the exactly, exactly. As long as they say it cheekily with a bit of a tongue and cheek, a bit of a joke. Yeah, a yeah, joke, I mean. because you can't blame you can't blame human beings that have been born into that family either. Do you know what I mean? You can't blame them on the past so, so much as you can't blame anyone on any of their ancestors' past because it's nothing got to do with you at the end of the day. You're here doing your own thing. You know, even down to your dad, your dad might have been a right bastard, but it's like that's not you. So, you know, you live your own life. As much as people like to say, look, the English, they're bastards, but I've never met an Englishman. <laughs> I've never met an Englishman I didn't like. I never have. You know, and, and that's the truth. But I just think that I've been. Um... I've gone through that thing where it's like the sins of the father and people kind of expect you to be just like your dad and blah, blah, blah. Like, I think that is a thing. You know what I mean? So I, if people are like that, I'm not going to waste the rest of my life trying to change people who are yeah, st yeah. stuck in the mud, you know? But mm. I just don't care if they think that of me now. I'm just like, well, if you think my dad's wrong and I'm a wrong and then, yeah, I'm a, then I'm a wrong and, innit? Just like... So back in the days, being a bastard ch child was controversial. Mm. It's like, oh, you're yeah. a bastard, your mum never yeah. married. But nowadays, I guess there's a lot more bastards. There's still people well, getting look, married. Well, look, yeah, I mean... There's still people getting married, but... Yeah, yeah but not as many as, as not. The, the, the stigma, I said, the stigma in all those red areas that we looked up on the map, the labour mm. areas, the stigma's probably gone. But if you go to the mm. blue areas... Definitely. <laughs> you think it's still there? The, yeah. Okay, of course. If you go to the blue areas, you can't go on. Nah, there. I don't think it's still there. Oh, I don't man. think it's still there. Because look, as I was saying to you, that that's a that's an up to date election election map, right? I I think the Labour has lost a lot, a lot of like that. All that blue is just recent, right? Yeah, that's from the recent election that um, Boris yeah, won. Yeah, because yeah. Labour were winning, were, were winning elections at one stage, right? They were winning a few seats, but obviously with... Um, no, but they were. I mean, they were... Uh, as, they as far as... Scotland, so Corbyn couldn't win the seats. But, but from, from Tony Blair right up to Cameron, I mean, before Cameron... So Tony Blair right up to David Cameron, it was Labour. Right, so was that's it, good. It was um, the Scottish guy in Labour... His name was... Yeah, um, yeah, Brown, Tony, uh, or Gordon, Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown. And what yeah. happened is Gordon Brown said he wasn't going to do austerity cuts. So, um, and he said he was going to put up the tax rates for businesses and mm. that he was going to um, change the 0% um, charge mm -hmm. for mortgage, mm -hmm. mortgage holders. So he was going to basically burst the property bubble and all the people who traditionally voted Labour that just mortgaged their property and had like... 30 years or 20 years to pay off were just like, no, fuck that. I normally vote Labour, but nah, David Cameron's about helping me with my mortgage. And then he got kicked out of Parliament. And there was a lot of anti-Scottishness. There's a lot of racist, anti-Scottish kind of posterior in, in, the, in the, the, the broadcast. There was era. at the time, was there? They didn't want that. A lot of British nationals, I mean, English um, EDL um, at the time Tommy Robinson was around there was a lot of Islamophobia get the, get the Muslims out stop letting them in and then there was a lot of this but he's Scottish how are we going to let a Scottish man run our country there was all of that going on and because that happened the English basically um, what's that saying don't bite your nose to spite your face or whatever it is or don't cut off your nose to spite your face yeah that that's it that was the turning point where Rupert Murdoch and the mainstream media used their um, voodoo magic to destroy the, the the and then David Cameron started talking about broken Britain, broken Britain, and oh sorry, we've got to do more cuts. And then he started ch changing all the legislations. He must have changed about 
500 legislation brought in new acts, new this, new that, changed the benefit system, changed everything. It was a Britain, a Britain force policy that he came in with, wasn't it? A bit like what Trump came in with, with his election. Yeah. So, a lot of um, crazy things that were going on, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? But I've, I've, I haven't even got halfway through this story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more out of this Princess Diana memorial thing. I'm going to get a bit more out of it. But... um. Let me just take, let me make the screen a bit more visual, visible. Paul O'Neill, thank you for that. And Susan Brown, we can see ya. I'm going to read that there's a couple bit, this story's quite long. There's just a little bit more to go. And then we're going to see what um, Dublin's got to say about that in the chat as well. Just try and get through it. Um, I'll just scroll down further to check how much more is left. It's not that much more. But yeah. I'm going to try and read as much as I can. Big up, Paul. It's not easy being a mongrel in, in Ireland, dude, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Whoa. not that. Is that what he says? But, but I'm one, too. Oh, and yeah. he, says, he says the word half cross. That's not politically correct, Paul. Yeah, Paul, come on. Mixed. Get it okay. together. Especially when you are one. <laughs> but then there's people that will never change how they speak. Yeah, exactly. They, exactly. They mean well, that's, but they that's, that's that. the way we've been. That's the word we we were conditioned with. We were conditioned you know? with it as well in London. But the thing is, when you look up the car system, Paul, go to India on Wikipedia and look up the Indian car system. Mm, actually, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Paul, Paul needs to look that up. But you're welcome to jump on whenever you're ready. I'm not. Um, I'm not um, against you. I know it's a slip of the tongue, but yeah. So, um, Sarah, Lady, Lady Sarah, Lady Jane, and Charles Earl Spencer have all remained close to their nephews since Princess Diana's death. Charles and his wife, Karen, sat front row at Prince William's 2011 wedding to Kate Middleton, which his three daughters and one son in the row just behind in pride of place next to the Middleton family too was Lady Sarah and Lady Jane. While Lady Anne Wake Walker, that's a long name, Diana's aunt, also had a place in the pew. Harry was also seen chatting to his uncle before the ceremony. The Spencer siblings, their spouses and children were also in attendance at Harry's wedding to Meghan in 2018. In 2019, the Sussexes shared a photo of Archie's christening which showed the Duke and Ju Duchess with their son and Lady Jane and Lady Sarah alongside the Duchesses of Cornwall. That's their four cousins though, right? That's their four cousins. Why, why like... Why wouldn't it? And and especially when they're not able to have friends. Their first cousins are their best friends and stuff. So, of course, they're going to be there, there you know? Yeah. Well, I don't, I I don't see why it's such a big their... deal uh, that, that the, the Spencers are in and around our lives, you know? But what I think they're trying to show is since the contra controversy around the race comments which may have been made by Prince Philip. Right. They're trying to show unity. And this is this yeah. event was is being on the uh, anti highly anticipated event. And there'll be body languages consultants watching this. They're probably gonna do yeah. about 50, 50 YouTube documents. Well yeah, look me and you were even talking about their body language earlier <laughs> on which I'm not the way to no, so they're gonna go to the next. Yeah, they'll go in on it. Yeah, they'll go in on it. Buy, yeah. They're gonna buy the footage in about twenty years and package yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? They'll do. They'll yeah. do whatever they want. But um, yeah, they're just trying to show unity at the moment, I guess, to try mm. and put the whole race, the conversation about race, because some, the mainstream media, there was someone calling the baby. Um, one of the journalists said the baby should be called George Floyd or Oprah Beyonce. Oh, so there no. has been there has been some spiteful comments uh, based on his position as a royal and him saying uh, he wants privacy but at the same time doing his royal duties and there's just people traditionalists would always have something to say but i think the yeah. traditionalist should be much more respectful to people of color or people who identify themselves in a who come from way. color yeah. yeah yeah 
And just like if someone doesn't want to be called um, a mongrel or, or half caste or blackie or nigger, then they should be respected and be called. De what most they definitely. Be called. Yeah. yeah. But most. the Prince of Wales, Dora Raglan, the, the Duke of Cambridge, and the Duchess of Cambridge in the green drawing room at when Windsor Castle. So I showed that picture earlier. They didn't. They did not attend the christenings of the Cambridge children. However, neither did Charles. Siblings, as it was just grandparents and godparents in attendance. Lady Sarah was on the statue committee and was tasked in 2017 with commissioning and privately raising funds for the creation of the statue. Her five colleagues included Diana's close friend Julia Samuel, who is a godparent of Prince George, and John Barnes. Chief Executive of Historic Royal Palaces. I thought this was going to say the footballer. The charity, <laughs> <laughs> the charity which looks after a number of royal sites. The committee was chaired by Jamie Lowther Pinkerton, William and Harry's former prince, principal private secretary. And it also included Jerry Farrell, director of Sladmore Gallery, which specialises in sculpture, as well as financier Guy Monson, the former trustee of the Royal Brothers Charity Foundation. So it sounds like Harry just broke away from all these former people because he wanted to just do his own thing, concentrate on his woman, and just live his life, because they seem to share quite a lot of these royal um, positions. So it says Harry, William and Harry's former principal private secretary so they shared the same private secretary that's long you need your own private secretary and your own like in these times of social media and these times of internet land and modern life you don't need to have the same private secretary and you don't need to have the same um trustee um former trustee of the royal brothers charity foundation maybe you need the same um trustee when it comes to certain things like your mum's statue but not all of the charities that you want to do because fundamentally you're just going to be working for your brother you're never going to have your own life everything William wants to do as a charity you've got to do and if you want to do different things he ain't going to listen to you so I think it was good that they, all of this former former business is um, highlighting so yeah People need to stop getting offended by the... I can't even say it in an Irish accent. People need to stop getting offended by words, terms. That's plain victim mentality for all. Well, I don't know. Dude, that's, I don't this really, is Paul again, is it? Yeah, Paul's just on... People need to stop Unity, Unity is, is coming. The Unity flag. The Unity flag. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> I think that Paul's just having a go, but whatever, Paul, you're in the side chat, so you can say that in the side chat. On the panel, I think I would um, pipe up a little bit because I'd be <laughs> um, having to moderate as well as talking, and there's other people listening to the conversation. So, yep, I'd have to kind of step in. But um, guest also included Kensington Palace head gardener, Gary James, and Graham... Dalamore, Dillamore, Deputy Head of Gardens and Estates at Historic Royal Palaces, Historic Royal Palaces Chairman Rupert Gavin also attended. The statue was commissioned by the brothers in 2017 um, to memorialise their mother and mark the 20th anniversary of her death. Kensington Palace said the princes wanted the statue to recognise her positive impact in the UK and around the world and help future generations understand the significance of her place in history. The statue aims to reflect the warmth, elegance and energy of Diana, Princess of Wales, in addition to her work and the impact she had on so many people, it added. The portrait and style of dress featured was based on the final period of her life. I read that before. Stick the, stick the uh, statue back on there while you're just reading yeah, yeah, for yeah. that. Let me go back to that. Because she did a lot for like people with HIV and... Uh, she, she did. She named she friends. She the, did. Like... The, the children who were starving in Africa. She yeah, did, like, yeah. Touched them, hugged them, picked them up. All that. And I'm sure Harry, you know, as has embodied 
a lot of those images and mm. just ran with who, who she was about and how she yeah. carried herself. I don't think he blinks twice, whereas he knows in the, the surroundings that surround him, that a lot of the, you know, keeping it, your bloodline clean and, and staying in your race and not mixing and not, you know, um, not mixing with other people. But that's crazy to even do that. It's crazy to do that. But that's part of England. I'm not going to deny it. Class, I know that. I know. Class is reality. It's as real as me driving to Hampstead Heath and realising that the film Bell, which depicted um, the Lord of the House of Commons, or the House of Lords, that owned Hampstead um, Heath, um, is called... What's the house in Hampstead Heath called again? Um, oh, I've got to go on Google Maps because I've forgotten it now. Hampstead Heath is called Hampstead... It's on our red book. Look at the amount of them that go crazy, you know, or, you know, it's not good staying within your own uh, family they parameters for, for, for mates. They do go crazy, but I'm trying, oh, what's it called? Hampstead Pond, Kenwood House, Kenwood House, yeah, Kenwood House, um, basically it was owned by government that land was like land for the serfs before there was um slavery slave trade in africa mm. that land would have been looked after by um british maybe irish scottish celts whoever the serfs do you know what i'm saying they did but they never yeah. had they never had slaves in england did they or did they they, they had serfs there was something called fr fraudalism so like in robin right. hood um the show robin hood there was a, a time when you lived in, a, you see, like the voting map I showed you, you'd live in a yeah, certain constituency yeah. and yeah. The, the lord of the land owned you. And if you wanted to go yeah. to the other land and marry, you could only tr you could only go to the other parish for marriage. By his, or, by his grace. For, yeah. By his grace. And then the king would, man or the dukes would ma manage the lords and the, and the, the king would communicate with the dukes. So in the oh. surveillance culture and the priests, well, the gossips and they'd be reading you the word of the Latin, um, the Latin translation uh -huh. from the Vatican. Uh -huh. So there were it wasn't freedom. It was, that's where the concept of ownership came from. But the the person, the, the Lord that lived in Kenwood House, that that Lord had a black niece on the land who who was um, working the land, but she was related to the rich people. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So yeah. the class yeah. is as real as me just driving. To North London and walking onto Kenwood Heath, kept going to Kenwood oh. House and realizing to myself, shit, this is a upper class area. And they didn't even knock down this bloody <laughs> they didn't even yeah. knock down this building. This family yeah. still exists. The the film yeah. is called Bell. It's a 2013 film, and it's about a black girl that was related to the upper class. Yeah. Because in mm. that time they were going to Jamaica and Barbados and wherever. And yeah, get a, yeah. The, the nephews or the sailors, the, like the Duke's nephews, would go to the New World and they'd fall in love with these black women because they'd mm. never seen black skin before. Have yeah. kids, take the kid back to England, forget about the mum, leave her on the plantation or send her some nice food and clothes and um, keep her in the house rather than on the field. Keep the kid in England. And act like, oh, colour doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, colour doesn't matter. Mm. And then they'd be faced with all these dilemmas of, oh, shit, where do, how do we walk down the street with this brown kid? What are we going to mm. do? So there was a lot of upper-class people living double lives, in one sense saying slavery's good, but in the other sense, they've got a black person in their family that they're hiding in the basement. And that mm. film shows you the reality of that. And so class, it never went away. You know what I'm saying? It's still here. So if people want to be overt with it, I prefer overt people. I prefer when people are overt than when they're being secretive about their Yeah, covert. Yeah. yeah. Don't come here talking to me about your religion and how you're different and you want to be secular when rarely and truly you don't like us, but you want to be here and you're just trying to do some secret thing hey. and no one trusts yeah. you and you're just as bad as the royal family and you've got your agenda, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if you're really about um, everyone's equal, whatever, then it should reflect in your family, in your friendship circles, just how you live. Someone should be able to just be amongst you and your family and exactly. not feel that you lot are like 
want to hang them on a tree, you know? So that's just exactly. A I'll, I'll go by your actions, not by your yeah. words. Yeah. But um, mm. basically, Lady Elizabeth Murray, Eliz- Dido Elizabeth Bell, um, and her cousin, Lady Elizabeth Murray, Murray lived at Kenwood House. And then their great uncle, um, William Murray, the first Earl of Mansfield. And I think he's related to Princess Diana. Flipping out. Right. And he was the Lord Chief Justice of England. He was important. Yeah. He was the head black... judge. Yeah, he had a black niece. And they no. had kept her locked in like Rapunzel let down your hair. They really? So in. no one could see. Yeah. So oh, no one could see in the top of North London. And he still got bloodlines. There's no way a man like that. Who's so powerful. Yeah, definitely. That family's still around. Definitely. That family's driving Bentleys and... Yeah, and they still and own a load of land yeah. down there. They're still so collecting never, rent. Yeah, and that's why... As they were say, in the 1500s. Yeah, and that's why when people say to me, oh, why do you focus on the negative? Why are you always talking about the power, the power? Because I live amongst the power. I live, I can see, mm. the, I can see the I can see the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, um... Basically, they all went unveiled the statue. I'm not going to keep banging on about who was there, cool. and the gardener, and blah, 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 because I think all of this is not really interesting. The main thing to me is that they've come together. Yeah. It's a bit sad that um, they've made it no wife events, like the wives weren't allowed to be. Right, there. okay. You know what I mean? So it's a bit... So um, they're still, they're still, is she over there with them, though? She, I think she's in America. With the daughter, well, there you go. That says it all, though. It, says it, it doesn't all. matter. Yeah, it does <laughs> say it all, though, yeah. It says a lot. You know what mm. I'm saying? Because they still feel... William and Kate feel like, who you call them racist? Nah, nah, mate. I'm, we're not racist. Yeah. We're going to yeah. run this country. When, in fact, it's like, well, your job is kind of a bit like... <laughs> you're, not, <laughs> you're not exactly like Mother yeah. Teresa, you know? Your job will involve you having to live in this class system where you're better and we're we're down here do you know what i mean so don't get too offended do you know what i mean but um mm. yeah i think i'm gonna just like basically there was people there i'm gonna summarize it um harry arrived 15 minutes before the event left 90 minutes after left after 90 minutes it's not known if he was heading to frogmore cottage or Heathrow Airport to fly back oh, to the Lord and Lilliput. He probably flew back. And um, s- sources close to El Spencer have said that there is hope that a celebration of their mother's life and legacy will bring Harry and William together again after months of discord over the Sussex- Sussex's decision to quit the royal family and subsequent interviews in which they publicly criticised the royal family. They didn't criticise the royal family. They said someone said, how dark <laughs> is the child going to be? That's not a criticism. That's just mm. saying it how it is. Do you know what I'm saying? If I said, how dark is your child going to be? Or how light is your child going to be? I can't get aff- offended by that. Because if I said it, I should have meant it. And I should have... Well, 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 the, the thing is, Red Boy, would you ask a question? Because they're about breeding, like you said. They but, say, but, well, hold on. Yeah, I mean, think about it in your own head. You look at the mother, look at Harry. Then you, you call, like, how, how, uh, how is Harry or Meghan gonna come up with an answer? They're gonna only gonna be guessing the same as anyone else's. It is a bit of a fucking horrible question, like, you know, how dark is your child gonna be? Like, I don't know. You tell me. Do you know what I mean, though? But it's the person that's asking the question that is even more telling. If you was, like you said, you're, you, you're from a diverse background. Yeah, yeah, you've already told me this. So there's mm-hmm. certain things you can say to me and my back might not get up straight away. Yeah, okay, Someone yeah, else yeah. could be from a background where they have lived in the shadows and they occupy a space where they've got access to wealth and they can be judgmental and it helps them. You know what I mean? Mm. And certain judgments just hit harder. Certain judgments from certain people would always sound like they are reinforcing their their status around you. You know, other people are not trying to 
be better than you when they make a judgment. They're not trying to bring yeah. you down or make sure. you remind you that you're not to shut up or that your voice is not needed or you're you're not wanted, you know. And um, mm. it's clear that you know there's other members of the family that just ain't as polite as William or as nice maybe as Charles or Diana. I don't think it was Charles. I think it was, it could have been Philip. It could have been anyone. It could have been a distant cousin. The fact is... Well, as, Philip was known for putting his foot into it in regards to yeah. talk and um, PC. He was, yeah, he was known for that. But do you know what else, though? Philip is from a generation of like... Definitely, like definitely, generation. definitely. They're just a bit more stern... And less yeah. emotional. Not less, <laughs> less chatty, chatty. Yeah, not, not, yeah. and less yeah. chatty, chatty, and a, a go down the pub and smoke a cigar, cigarette type of character. You know what I mean? Drink your troubles away, smoke them away. Yeah, most def, yeah. Mm. And not mm. too emotionally triggered. Whereas yeah. the the younger generations, we're flying off the handle every five seconds. But mm. um, however, Omid Scobie, the Sussexes preferred. Royal Reporter played down the idea of a public reconciliation ahead of the event. Ahead of the event, he said, "What we will see is two brothers being professional in a moment that is not about them. This is going to be a moment we see them put everything to one side. <laughs> we will just see the professionalism, nothing else." He's saying, "Listen, mate, yeah." Anyone else say something fuckeries about his kid and he's going to kick off. We're going to see them shut the hell up, take the fucking thing off, the veil off the statue and part ways. This ain't no fake shit. This is reality. Like siblings, like all, most siblings have a little kink in their relationship. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. You cannot grow up in a family with more than two children or two or more children and not have a kink in the relationship where there's just certain trigger words or certain facial expressions or just <laughs> <laughs> don't make shit kick off I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, keep it yeah. real, you know what I'm because it's the same when you get a room full of women. You could have a woman come in and she just looks really cool, really good. She's got, come out the hairdressers. She's got a new dress on. She's got the new shiny shoes on. And there'll be mm. one other woman that looks fine. There's nothing wrong with her. But she'll just want to rip that girl's character to pieces. Why? Uh. Because she doesn't realise she's slightly intimidated. And she doesn't know how to express it. So the only way That's to express it, it is yeah. by being mean. Yeah. Being nasty. Families. You know what I'm saying? It's tribalism, man. Mm, and their mm. family is very tribal. You know what I'm saying? The most. Mm. Yeah, they're all they're all they're all fighting amongst themselves who's gonna be top dog. And that's always been the way of royals, you know? How can I climb my position up one more rung on the ladder? They see Harry as dangerous competition mm. and if, if harry was an evil man because he's, he's popular because he's popular he's natural he's a natural kind he's exactly a as we were saying earlier on he's more down to earth with, with, with his antics he, he, even though his antics might have been a bit whoa you know he's more masculine he's they were he, it was more down, down to earth yeah he when is, you see he William is. At the football he's not bald <laughs> When you see William, William's very well educated. He's very well spoken. He's very, yeah. you know, he's very kind of knows the right things to say and the right way to say yeah, it. Yeah, because he's been skilled. Just, yeah. yeah, he's been so, skilled to be the king. Harry's been hasn't been skilled. Yeah, and the thing is, when you've been schooled, and you can that, it. it kind of takes away part of your. Masculinity. But you can see it, like... even even in their voice, even in their accent, you can see yeah. it. And can you imagine, like, the amount of bum liquors that have been around William since he's been at boarding school? Yes. And Harry, I'm sure, as well. Yeah. Harry, not so much. I think the level of... I'm uh, sure there was a lot of William's friends around Harry that probably thought they were even better than Harry because they were William's best friend, you know? No, I think William had... A very strange, unbelievable understanding of 
male relationships with people that like oh, how what? you formed male what? relationships at school and in your teenage years and in adulthood he would view men not as competition not even as a threat and not so as yes. an equal not as an equal as someone that so will yes. tie your shoelace yeah, lick, so your, lick, lick, yeah. lick your foot. Lick your ass. <laughs> like, literally, yeah. Yeah, I'm so and yes, going, yeah. going to boarding school or private school and having teachers, like, want to lick your toes as well. So he's had a different level of kind of... It's kind of dangerous in a way because it, yeah. it kind of put him in a vulnerable position when he was young, just like his son is quite vulnerable right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because the more that people that he allows around his son, it's like Lord Mountbatten was accused of being a bit of an idol worshiping yeah. person around Charles. Yeah. So when you're the when you're the first born royal, you see a lot of crazy people come around you. Whereas mm. I feel like mm. Harry saw it going on and was just like, What what who's put you trying to kiss? Oh fuck off. Feck off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. don't kiss my foot. Or just like putting on a disguise and going in, incognito in public and ordering a beer and no one realising it's him and then going back to the palace. I can imagine... Because, just Fred, you'd, ha you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd have to want to be normal. Do you know what I mean? It, it has to be an act to want to be this um, person that's going to rule uh, a, a whole race of people, or not a whole race of people, but yeah. a whole mass nation, of people. Race, nation. Yeah, a whole nation of people. Race. Yeah. It has it's to be a right. put on. It has to be a put on, you know? The, they are like... And it has to get tired. It has to get tired. Oh, God. Susan Brown! Oh, God. Can you see what she said? Don't read it out, but can you see it? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm sure YouTube can't cancel your channel for the comments. Hopefully not. <laughs> they, can, they can probably blur it out if they get that offended. But it's, uh, it's, in, it's based in California anyway, so it's not, it's not a British, um, it's not a British thing. But yeah, no, this conversation's quite deep. I didn't think it was going to go like into so many angles, but yeah, yeah, Diana, she was just, she kept, she held it down, man, and she set the tone for the way that these kids are going to be more modern. She modernised. Exactly. And, she, and definitely. She, yeah, definitely. She herself right was outside of the, the, the mm -hmm. bloodline that they wanted. It. They wanted him to go more. And outside the thinking as well. Yeah, yeah. She was outside the bloodline, outside the whole family, uh, whatever, uh, circle eight and she she was outside their thinking as well and brought new thinking to it and i think harry is a is a is a second to that yeah but it's just sad that um it's sad that camilla's gonna be the consort to charles that's the sad news for me for me that's gonna to see her i don't think world. those two are gonna get there to be honest, Red, I don't think those two are going to get there. For whatever, well, I don't know why it's in my head, but I don't think... But I they've think changed it's gonna... the rules so you can be divorced. and, head and head... They've changed the rules so you can be yeah. divorced, gay and female and head of state. That's why they've brainwashed the okay. public to accept these yeah. things. Because at one point, if George turns out to be gay, he'll be the first gay king of England. Official one, anyway. You know what I'm saying, but normally they keep that behind doors and brainwash them into liking women. But um, if they've changed the rules to say you can be divorced or second married, he'll be the first king that's been divorced. If they've got gay priests in the Church of England, he will be the king. That's just the facts. That's it. Um, what's he gonna do about in there? What's he gonna do from what? What's he gonna do about in there? About an heir to the throne. What prince? If he was gay, say if say if he was gay. Um... Or IVF. Or they, oh, that, right, okay. that's when you get. Would well, you know what? That's a good question. They could do IVF blatantly, six thousand pounds, easy. Yeah. Or mm. they could um, 
pass it on to the sister or the brother's child, the sibling child, without being murdered. Because in the past, they'd just kill them off for that. If it came out, they'd let them do it behind the scenes and get them a wife, but they would kill them off. If you look at, if you look on the, if you research it, there's been loads of them that's been into that stuff. Because all that behaviour was celebrated in Rome, it was celebrated in um, ancient Greece. Do you know what I mean? That type of stuff was celebrated in the military, in the, um, in the higher levels of um, government, in Roman government. I think Alexander the Great was into that and all that. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just stuff that they, it's just part of, you know what I mean? What, what yeah, Paul, me, me and Red were saying the exact same thing earlier on about uh, why wasn't it William and Hardy in the statue order. We were saying the same thing, weren't we, Red? I think that the... Yeah, we were saying the same thing. I think what's going on is there's a fight to give her the status as princess because remember, the Queen Mother wanted to remove that title. You're not the princess of the world anymore. You're, and then the, the, the Sun newspaper and the public said, well, she's the queen of our hearts and it caused the major... Yeah. Yeah, not backlash, backlash, yeah. 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 So on that statue, she's referred to the Princess of Wales, which should be Camilla's title, because she's got, she's with the Prince of Wales, isn't she? And when she becomes cons cons consort, and when she's sitting on the throne with, with at the coronation next to Charles, she'll be crowned consort, consort with diamonds and necklaces and brooches from Queen Elizabeth and Queen Elizabeth II and. Mm. Um, Queen Mary should be wearing all their crowns and wearing all the diamonds from India and all that. She'll be lapping it up. So Camilla's just there for the money, to be fair. And Camilla's got her own children. And do you have you have you seen a photograph with Camilla with her biological children in the last no. um, twenty no. years? No. I don't even How many kids has she got? Camilla. Oh, Google it. You know, you should watch that crown. It. Because it, it gives you a bit of an insight into it, you know. Because you 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 see you see uh, Charles talk, trying to talk Camilla around when she's still married. It's it, it's it's a great. It's actually a great watch. It really is. First marriage in the late nineteen sixties, Camilla met Andrew Parker Bowles, then a guards officer and lieutenant in the Blue and Royals, though. Through his younger brother, Simon Parker Bowles, who worked for her father's wine firm in Mayfair, after an on-and-off relationship for years, Andrew and Camilla announced their engagement in the Times newspaper in 1973. Marrying on the 4th of July that year in a Roman Catholic ceremony. Oh, she was Roman Catholic. That's mm. they couldn't get to. Oh, Camilla. They're not allowed to, they weren't allowed to um, no, have um, no. Catholic yeah. partners at that time. Yeah. They've changed that rule, I think. But yeah, at that well, time, um, you, couldn't, you couldn't get with a Catholic. Um, was so, that change with, 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 with the, you can be gay and all of that sort yeah, of stuff? they've updated it. They've up, they've, yeah. Elizabeth's done a lot of updates because she's got to be ready because Elizabeth feels like her family is going to get shoved in the bin. So she's covered mm. every corner possible mm. To, mm. before she dies. Ceremony at the guards. Chapel Welling Wellingham, Wellington Barracks in London. Camilla was 25 years old and Parker Bowles was 33. Her wedding dress was designed by a British fashion house, Belleville Sassoon. And the bridesmaids included Parker Bowles' goddaughter, La Emily, Lady Emma Herbert. It was considered the society wedding of the year with 800 guests in attendance. Royal guests present at the ceremony and reception included Prince Anne, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and Princess Margaret, Margaret, Countess of Snowdon. So his sister was, oh, that's a different Margaret. But the, um, the Queen Mother was there. That's nuts. And uh, Prince's sister was there too. I mean, Charles's sister. The couple mm -hmm. made their home in Wiltshire, purchasing a manor. Um, and they had two children. Tom, born 1974. Let me see a picture of this guy. He don't even look like a royal. He don't even look rich. Br Tom Thomas Henry Charles Parker Bowles is a British food writer and food critic. You might have Where shows him? Shows him there. Red. You want to see a picture? Let me go into. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, let me go here. 
What picture are you looking at? I'm on Wiki. So I'm just going to show oh, okay. because I've got so many tabs open. <laughs> wiki I've got, I'm doing it now. So you should be able to. I'm going to highlight. Now I've highlighted it. Can you see him? Does it pop up? Yeah, yeah, I can see him. Right. Yeah, no, he doesn't look like a royal. I think that's because of the, the top he's wearing underneath that jacket. To he be honest. Looks like, um, Gordon he, does, he looks like a normal Joe. So. What's the other guy? Um, oh, there's another one he looks like. And then lives in a nice one. house, though. That's his house to the right, is it? No, that's the, the ma- that's the house, is the marriage house. That's where they got married in. So you, that's oh, where okay. he was born, probably. He's um author of seven cookbooks and in 2010 won the Guild of Food Writers 2010 Award for his writings on British food. Does he have kids? That's all I want to know. Two kids. And he's married to Camilla. No, that's his parents. Oh. Um, he's married to... That's this guy. Sarah Baez, Baez, yeah, that's his, that's her, her son, her oldest son. That's Prince William's brother. Oh. Prince William's brother in law. This is half of our stepbrother, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit old fashioned. I don't like all that. For, for yeah, I don't like all that. So if it was it's... different times, if it was different times, Red, he could, uh, in effect, go in. Kill all, kill William, Harry, <laughs> Prince Charles, and get his mother to be queen, and then yeah, he'd be yeah, next in line, wouldn't yeah, he? Kill, but he'd have to kill off. He'd have to go around Europe and kill uh, yeah. the, the, he'd have to kill off the Spanish um, ro- Queen Victoria's grandchildren. All yeah, them. all Queen Victoria's yeah, grandchildren. Yeah, 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 yeah. But his probably is. Yeah, he um, probably they probably have something to do with Victoria anyway. His godfather is the Prince of Wales. Can you see that highlighted in um, blue? <laughs> what? And Charles is his, is his godfather. Charles is his godfather. Of oh my god! Spanish. And Laura, let's look at the the daughter. She's oh she's she's um incognito. She's a, she's a piece of art. She's a worker. She looks artist. good looking. She's good looking. She's kind of right. Um, Laura Rose Lopez. Why has she got a Spanish name? Lopez? She's oh, a, yeah, she she goes. Has she got the right dad? Is that their, is their dad Latino? No, no, no. Let's see. Lieutenant Andrew Parker Bowles. No picture. Oh, God. I'm going to have to Google it. Let me just... Why, why is she Lopez? As the, oh, this must be to his new. No, that, she's had two children for this dude. Um, He looks... Yeah, he kind of looks mad. But so Camilla's Camilla's daughter, the second name is Lopez. Yeah. What? She's married. She's married. She married a. She married a. Latin. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Fair enough. So let's go to her page. Where is it? Oh, yeah. I lost it. She's good looking. But it's an art. You're just looking at an um. You're just yeah, I know. But, you're not, well, that's some. She was good looking. Than that then. <laughs> <laughs> That's just being cheeky. She's just being cheeky, isn't it? She's like, don't put me on the internet. You know what I mean? She's on. She's got three children. Um, she got married in 2006. She married a chartered accountant, Harry Lopez. What's the book? Well, because he's a chartered account- accountant. So oh, he must be... Um, she marries model. Camilla's daughter marries model. Let's see this. Check on this page. Oh, God, he looks younger than her. Yeah, no, she's not that good looking. Is that the two of them there? Yeah. That's in the 90s or something, is it? Is that in the 90s or something, man? Miss P- Miss Parker Bowles tied 20. No, nah, she's not good looking. Harry Lopez. Not at all. 30s. She looks older than him. Yeah, two of them are big horse heads. Two, look at the two of them are at the uh, wedding, are they? You said horse head. <laughs> Yeah, don't they have horse heads? The two of them look like brother and sister. Yeah, oh, that's don't they? That's same teeth, same teeth. Oh, God. But he don't even look Spanish. He's probably got some kind of Spanish. No. Thing yeah, so she grew up in Coulsham. Look how good looking she is in that painting. Oh my God. Like, that's a different person. <laughs> She went to Catholic Big lips girls. and all, like she little small Catholic, nose. Catholic girl. Nah, that's not her. Dorset. Yep. And what's her job? Um, her 
her job is she's a cr- she she creates art. She puts it around rooms and makes it look. <laughs> <laughs> In 2009, 30th December 2009, she gave birth to two fraternal twin boys, Gus and Louis. Um, and she was the bridesmaid at the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton. Um, she gave birth to her daughter, Eliza. Why is she trying to call her daughter Eliza, like Elizabeth, on um, mm-hmm. January the 16th, 2008? This family tree, man. So, yeah, there you have it. She's got a son and a daughter. And they were raised in their father's Roman Catholic faith. So they're... Yeah. Okay. And that's it. But she's Roman Catholic as well, if her mother is, right? Yeah. So she's having no problem with it. They divorced Camilla and her... So Jesus, the, the, the Pope is nearly after taking back over here. And then the... Um, they the old, that um... does though, innit? You know they say... <laughs> In December 1994, after 21 years of marriage, Camilla and her husband both issued divorce proceedings on the ground that they had been living separately for years. Mm. And then in June, July of that year, her mum died of osteoporosis. So it was a difficult time for her. Okay. Camilla and Charles reportedly met in 1971. So when did they, when she was, was that, she was married then, yeah. Yeah, don't look good for her, man. It's not looking good. Oh. I've lost my screen. All right, so it's this one. One second, I'm going to stop sharing that one and go back to the sculpture. What else did you got on the menu anyway, Red? Did oh, you got TV one more thing on the menu? A reality TV show. When you say on the menu, you mean, you mean like to talk about? No, it. you said the three things you are you are gonna do on the show tonight. Yeah, um, I don't know. Let me see if I can find this show. All right, so it's called the on. So what was it anyway? About Love Island or something, was it? No, nah, nah, it wasn't Love Island. It's a show where they put these um, celebrities in a house to make an album, but they don't really like it. They don't really like each other. Okay. So it's like... Oh, and what is it? It's all musicians then, is it? Or yeah, are they all singers? Or They're all singers, but they're supposed to come together to make a hit. But I just don't see it working. Just, so it's not guitar, I mean, it's not going to be a band, it's just going to be a load of, like, that's not going to work. Well, I'm trying to find the website. It keeps taking me to Channel 5. I don't understand that. What's it called, anyway, Ruth? It's called The Encore. I'm going to have to just look up an image. Let me look up a Google image, and then I'll share the screen. So, The Encore, I'm going to end on this one. Basically... They're all from old groups. So there's a oh there's a picture, I'll use that one. Let me just Oh it's not good. that's um I need to find something that's not a video. So I've got like a blog. Uh, let me just scroll down. Oh here we are. Uh, that might be good. So if I click on that. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna use this blog and as a click on their picture. And then share the screen. So it's like a bunch of girls from America, and you might you might have heard some one of their songs or whatever. Yeah. But um, can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Encore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the show includes Shamari Devoe, who's who oh, see, there's a young young girls and old girls, and no, one of these the girls, girls are fine. You would know, yeah. you would know the Tom. There's a girl in there that's a tomboy. She's got. She's next to the. Girl. Oh, I see her. Yeah, but the dreads you know, or the the plaits. Yeah, the cameras, Yeah, you would know her song with Biggie, the Notorious B.I.G. She had a song. Um, okay. Can't you see? 
What you do to me, the love was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Song, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone knows that song. So because she's from that group, she's got an issue where she's religious, but at the same time, she had an alcohol problem. And then um, she, I think she went a bit gay. And then um, she looks gay, and but then on the album that she they did, um, the producer Puff Daddy, he forced them to have like a really strong kind of um, how can I say it without getting a strike? What? He he forced them to make music that was a bit kind of um, in your face. Oh, oh. Do you get what I mean? There was oh. a part on the album when you literally like heard sound effects in some okay. kind of room. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The album's really cool because it sounds like uh, funky and urban and it's got a bit of hip and it's a bit hard driven, a bit of James Brown and all that. It's very oh. James Brown with a bit of rap. But that the bits where he was trying to like make them too kind of aggressively in your face, when you listen oh. back to it, you're like, mm, this is a bit demonic. Or, mm. So I can yeah. see where she's kind of gone down that path of, if one more person comes up to me and tells me that they like that, you know, um, oh, yeah. acting scene we did, I'm going to flip in, you know what I mean? So she's gone the other direction to God and she's saying oh. that she's like a reformed alcoholic and she doesn't want to practice being with women anymore. She just wants to go to God. So her name is okay. Pam Long and she was in the group Total. Then you've got Albury O'Day. She might be Irish, you know. Um, she's an American... She's got to be Irish with that last name. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. She's the, um... Where is What's she? this one with the blonde hair? Light oh, skin she's thing. She's not even in that picture. Hold up. Where, how come they took her out of the picture? Nah, that's rude. I've got... She's... Probably the only she's, whiteboard. Let me click again on... They've got another picture of all of them on the second blog that this person put, wrote. Is that not all of them she's, at the top, Red, no? Nah, because they left out the white girl, which I think is a bit strange. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on another. And this is Audrey O'D, the the uh, or O'Day or well, how do you spell it? O D A O'Day O D A Y O D A Y. Yeah, I'm going to do another. Sp I'll That's a mad. Oh, I heard that, ladies. She's had plastic surgery, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the before and after. Yeah, yeah show me the before. She's, um, She's from Puff Daddy's Making the Band, and um, they was in an American version of the Spice Girls where they were like the first oh, successful, right. the first successful mixed group. Does that make sense? So, mm. Like, mm. In, in America, yeah, in America. So I'm gonna change the screens around so you can see it. Oh no, she's there. I've got a picture of her on the screen. She's there. I've got all of them. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's there. She's on the left hand side. Can you see her? The blonde one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? She's got pure Botox, pure lip, lips done, all that. She's quite confident. Yeah, she looks a bit chubby, actually, because of all yeah. the plastic surgery. Yeah, she's kind of... Yeah. Like, I've got a, Let me change the screen. I've got a bigger screen with all pictures of her. Let me change the screen to just her. One second. Yeah. So you can see many pictures of her, the changes. She's oh, okay. From, um, oh, Lake look, she's, she, she, she's good looking. Yeah. Well, geez, she looks really fat, that, and, and the latest ones there. But those top ones, she's good she looking. She's like that now. With, she's got bigger lips now. And she went out, she was texting Donald Trump's son. That's what got her famous. Oh, name. okay. She, he was married. But you see her here in the older ones where she hasn't got as much breasts. Like, and look, look at the very, um, go up to the top again there. One second, let me show you. That's what she looks like in the show. That's her now. Now. Very crispy. Yeah. Right yeah, nah. I mean, That's bad. too much. Nah. nah. <laughs> she's it's not disgusting. bad. She's not bad, but she's nah, not. Disgusting. She's very, she's very confident. That's the thing with her. She's, She's very so confident, but yeah. no reason to be confident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she, man. she goes into the situation and she will say, this is my opinion. I'm the leader. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. I've had two number one albums. 
and like, yeah, I'm just like, she doesn't back down at all. So to think of her in a group is a bit like, of a, it's a bit of a joke because she mm. wants to be solo. You know, she does, she, I don't yeah. see her sharing the spotlight. So, so she's put into to cars rails, obviously. Not just, yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe she's been put up for that. She went in and she got into an argument with a mixed lady who was in the Cheetah Girls. And then this this girl is called Keely, and she was in a group called the Free LW and the Cheetah Girls. I'm sure if you got a daughter, or if you got a little sister, or if you just seen like the Cheetah Girls, you'd have seen something about them on telly or somewhere. She's in the top. Well, how long, how, how old, how old are they going now? They, they, they were just an annoying little Are they group. recent? No, nah, they're not recent, but they were such okay. an annoying group that everybody was yeah. like, oh, yeah. them. Yeah, they did Cheetah Girls in India, Cheetah Girls. They were like high school musical, but the girl from the Cheetah Girls is jealous of her, or maybe she feels that because she's white and um, because, because she's mixed heritage and she's got a white husband and she's got a white dad and a black mum, maybe she feels a bit like the Irish girls just a bit too much competition for her. That's how that's how it's coming across to me. It's coming across like she feels like she wants to be the loud one, but the <laughs> but the Irish girl's kind of confidence is making her feel like she doesn't know how to fit in. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. she's looking at her like, well, I'm I'm supposed to be the light the light skinned, you know. I'm supposed to be mixed, mixed heritage, and I'm supposed to be this in the spotlight and telling these darker skinned girls what to do. And you're just coming here, and you're just like taking over. And I don't know, I just don't know what to do anymore. Do you know what I mean? And she's very kind of like the girls like her because she's confident. So I think because the Irish girl's confident, the girl, the girl at the top in the middle, just is. Oh, oh no, the girl at the top in the middle came up with the concept of the show. So she did a pilot. She did a pilot, yeah. But, um, all right, we've got some, yeah, yeah, someone's, Susan Brown <laughs> is one of them girls that's so raven. Yeah, 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 so Susan does. Oh God, what's going on? We've got um, two Dublin trillists. Let me just um, uh, put it on full screen, add, and then put it on full screen. Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. It, you can yeah, There's two profiles. Is that you? Still. Still. Is that you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Still. The other one still there. No, nah, it came off automatically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, Suzanne Brown knows um, about this group. She's like one of them, so Raven too, and she laughed out. And then um, Paul said, she's good looking to you, Dublin. They say beauty's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this show is like X Factor for like maybe the failed, not failed, that's a harsh. I shouldn't say failed, that's harsh. Um, so on the top left corner, you've got a singer called Nivia. She was, you know Nivia's voice because you know Mystical and you would remember that song that goes, Danger! Uh, right now, watch yourself. Uh, get on the mm. floor. That feeling right now. Uh, been so long, been gone. So please show me. You know that song, man. And he was in the desert. Don't tell me you don't know that song, fam. Mystical. No, I'm gonna show you a picture of Mystical. Let me, let me type in. Ah, oh, bro, man. Let me go and do another screen and do this. Mystical. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have to do a YouTube play for one second. Boy, oh, is it James Brown song? Yeah. No, he sat that he wanted it to be James Brown. That's exactly. Who oh, he okay. Like. I'm gonna show you a clip of the video. One second. Mystical Danger featuring Nivea. Because they can't shut my channel down for if it's less than ten seconds, they can't sh shut the video down. Do you know what I'm saying? So. Right. And I don't have that much of a following anyway. So it's not like it's going to get to that level um, where 
I'm gonna get. Yeah, but when you do, it's probably when you do rip, and then they'll pick up on your old videos, and that's how they'll. Well, what I'll do is I'll share the screen to the <coughs> sound sound off because it's the sound really, you know, that they care about, and I'll show you the video, and then it might jog your memory because everybody knew this song, so Mr. Cool share. Yeah, you're, cut, you're cutting out, Red. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, bro. <clears throat> so this is the, that's mystical. It's a Pharrell Williams song. I'm going to put the volume on. Get a strike. You know the song? You said, get a strike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, bro. And you got, bro, are you doing live streaming as well? You need to get on that, man. Nah, nah, nah. It is a bit of a responsibility, I ain't gonna lie. It does drag out a bit sometimes when you've got people that want to um, see more. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant singer, Red. You should join that group. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you got Nivia. She's in the top left-hand corner. She's like a singer that went out with the Little Wayne, had the baby with Little Wayne. Then she had a baby with a, sing a producer called The Dream, who's like a rap singer. Mm. So she kind of had to come out of music to be a mum. She's really put a lot of energy into being a mum. But she's got a fantastic voice. And if you listen to any of her old stuff, you're going to love it. Like, if you go on Spotify and listen to her first two albums, you'll be like, oh, God, I should have listened to this before. Do you know what I'm saying? Then you've got Shamari. That was a very bad Irish impression of her accent. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got Shamari. It's so bad, I didn't even know it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Then you've got Shamari on the top right hand corner. She goes out. She's married to one of. Wait, wait, the what's the girl with the black, uh, the black hair in the middle? The middle, in the, the middle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's from a group called Seven O Two. You should know Seven O Two from the song with Missy Elliott. You know how I feel, and you know how I flow. Can I get your name and number? Cause I like your Steve low, and I dig the way you move, and the way you do mm. your thing. They, that song, and one of them's called Irish. Uh, there two, there's two sisters from the group on the show. One's called Irish, one's called Leisha. And they had another tune that went, where my girls at? From the front, the back, and you're feeling that. Throw one hand up, can you repeat that? Don't play yourself. And then they had that garage tune that went, um, you don't know what you do. Got me loving you, and I do you know, know what. Right, you don't listen to them type of tunes, obviously. So I, Even if I did read, I wouldn't remember the lyrics <laughs> to what you do, bro. <laughs> Well, they, they are, they've got tunes. I know you know their songs. Simple. You must know because you've gone to a pub, you've gone to a club. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would have heard them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have yeah. been like, enjoying some of the tunes. Mm. And then um, the girl, there's another two twin sisters, Felicia and Falon. They're 34. They're full of energy. They're quite opinionated, full of life, quite feisty. And they produce. One of them plays the piano. They sing quite well. They had a mediocre song out in the year 2006 or whatever. But they're very in your face. They do all the hard work, all the producing. I mean, they know the mm. producers. But the mixed girl seems to have an issue with everyone because she was in the pilot for the show with a girl that got kicked out of Destiny's Child called Farah. And because the show got picked up because of their pilot, they everybody else jumped on. Oh, okay, the show. yeah, She's yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. I don't want to sing because I'm old and I'm a mum and I'm I'm not a good singer. I can dance, but I rap and I'm not really. Um, I, I'm a middle class housewife, so she's coming in like, well, I'm going to direct everybody and I'm going to tell you what to do. And they two <laughs> twins were like, no, you're not, because I've written for Chris Brown and I've just written a hit song for Justin Bieber called Peaches. I know you can't tell me anything because you're mm. you're not on my level. And then it just mm -hmm. kind of went crazy. And then Aubrey was like, oh my god, yeah, you two are young. So I'm going to go with you because you're young, because I think I'm young. And let's have two groups instead of one. And it, basically, it's episodes one, two, three, and four so far. 
It's good. The songs, the music sound okay. They're playable. I'd play them in a car. I'd play mm. them in my, in my home. But the drama is good. They kind of resolve the arguments, but then they kind of carry on. Um, some of the older singers have kind of lost their voices a little bit or a bit nervous. And, and some singers are better. And I think they've got the opportunity to actually remake to the deal so. Yeah. To do something this year, and if they do it again next year, the shows I can see the show getting really kicking off. Yeah. Actually, doing it in England with um, you know, ex ex yeah, yeah, like yeah. Shane, Shane Lynch or ex yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah, and coming together just to do. No album. doubt they will if it, if it's successful over there. No doubt they will. I remember there was a group called Bewitched with Shane Lynch's yeah, 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 and Samantha Mum, but they could do an Irish one, fam. Fuck it, they could. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They can uh-huh. literally do one and they have some good tunes, like some modern club songs and shit, some dance songs and all that. So I think this format is a good format. Mm. Um, I personally have a favourite, it's Pamela, because she sang with the Notorious B.I.G. And she had a good voice. She was like Ch- Tracy Chapman. She wasn't like all Whitney Houston. I love Tracy and, Chapman. Yeah, yeah, she had that gritty kind mm. of... Um, Something about her vocals was just like, I don't know, just a bit like. It was it indie? Yeah, like yes, real like indie. She was just different. Mm. Like she was just always been in her own little world. She hasn't tried to be anyone else, and mm, she mm. sings some really good songs. It's weird because you'd think someone would have to sing like an opera singer to to like have a good impact on a song. But no, mm. she's I, I play she's got songs from when I was thirteen years old. Who Tracy Chapman, definitely no, man. Tracy Chapman she... and and this girl here. Oh, this know. other girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the lesbianish ex lesbian one. The one yes. that sang with Biggie, is it? Yeah. Because and she's her name, Red? Pamela Long. She sings the Pamela. hook on Biggie, 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 can't you can't see? You see? Sometimes yeah. your hurts hypnotize me, and I just like your flashy ways. Mm. That's why they broke and your soul pay. And she sang on the, you remember Mace, the rapper Race? Mace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. remember Race. Right, yeah. that song? Mace, Melanie, you know Chain Bubbling. Don't you remember that tune? Tell me, tell me what you want from me. Take a look at what you see. Let me know. Yeah. Do you yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her and her group. That's what I'm saying, bro. She oh, killed it, bro. She's yeah, she's yeah. not she's not rubbish. She's not Beyonce. She's not Whitney. Mm, but mm, sometimes mm. you just need those type of singers to just put on your playlist. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I try. I'm gonna try and watch episode five. I think that Pamela, um, she did a song to God, and I was rolling my eyes, thinking, "Why are you doing a song to God? You're taking this God thing a bit too much now." But when the other girls jumped on, they managed to get every... Because the, there's a role in the house called the Queen of the House. Or the Queen... Yeah, so they all get a chance to be voted Queen. So mm. um, the mixed girl from the Cheetah Girls wanted to be the Queen really badly. And then when the Irish girl became Queen, she got really upset. And she was going, around going oh, she's not the Queen. Oh, she can't be the Queen. <laughs> she's doing what she's doing. So I'm saying. And then the Irish girl came with all these vision boards and she was putting pictures on a board and writing things out and going, this is our image. We could go with this image. We could be like women united, women of different nations and colours united and we can have these type of ideas. And everybody was like, yes, you're really clever. We like your ideas. But she still kind of is, um, you don't mess with her. Even though she's coming with these oh. ideas, she was still kind of, um, she's very in your face with, you know what I'm saying? So, She'll stand up for herself. She's not scared of no one in the house, the Irish girl. But uh, mm. um, the, the mixed girl is scared to confront her, but she goes into the behind the scenes and or she'll go behind And her gives her. it socks, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> huh. uh, basically, t- the Queen's task is to have the final say and you have to get voted in like Big Brother. So, so far, they voted the Irish girl, they voted the ex-lesbian girl, and... Um, the ex-lesbian girl was very, because um, she's the oldest, she kind of brought everyone together and prayed with everyone and kind of got them through their rocky patch. The Irish girl was a queen, but she um, got a lot of kind of back backbiting because she got a bit sick. She had a stomach ache. I think she just didn't want to share one of the good songs with the other singers. So she thought that it... <laughs> she thought if she ran off to the bedroom and pretended to be sick, that none of the other girls would get on the good song that she liked. And she didn't want to go on the God song. So she tried to kind of just 
um, get away from it. When she yeah, yeah, yeah. the God song, she was all right. She hit a few wrong notes, but together, the clip that I heard, that I might actually like that God song. I'm not even joking, fam, because I <laughs> I went from I don't even want to hear this to raw. They sound yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. They actually said it sounded like it was positive music. No, because she said I'm not saying anything sexual. Because obviously I understand why she's saying she's not saying anything sexual. Because the first album, very sexual bits in it. And the second album, there's very sexual bits in her. Because she was hip-hop. Do you know what I'm saying? She's from oh. the hood. So obviously she wants to do music her um, children can listen to, innit? But um, yeah, that's the drama so far. The queen of the house is the drama. And um, there's um, they've got to do three tracks with all of them on the track. And then they can do two tracks with um, less than all of them on it. And basically, mm. they've got five tracks to do, and then they've got to do a, a television performance. In the, They've got to live together for a month in the house and do a performance once the album's complete, and they've got to learn dance routines, and they've basically got to stop hating each other. And get yeah, 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 yeah. And be, then, be a band. Like, was, yeah, or, when uh, episode one came out, people were saying, the twins are bitches, the twins are evil. So the twins came out on episode two going, sorry, no, uh, look, we're not as famous as everyone else, but I'm going to speak my mind. Like, I'm not going to have people mm. misinterpreting. I've worked really hard. I've worked with Justin Bieber. I've worked with Chris Brown. Like, me and my sister, we came from nowhere, and now we're in the charts now. So we're just saying, mm. we're just saying we've worked with Justin Bieber. So, like, there's mm. all this online Instagram shit going, mm. and it's, like, it's good for the show, because if you go on YouTube, you'll just see, once you watch episode one, the encore, or BETs, the encore, once you go and watch episode one, you'll just get all of the other stuff connected to it. So I think it's a good idea. And if you do end up watching one episode and you and you let me know what you think, come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, there's Susan said some stuff in the chat. So she said, let me see. Hey, don't worry. Once America do it, England will do it. They always copy. Mm, and then mm. she said, the Irish girl will probably be the first up. No, they're not allowed to kick. They're not allowed to kick um, anyone out. They're not allowed to kick anyone out. Um, they've got to work together, and that's what's going to make the show in, um, impactful for all women watching. To, to teach women like have your arguments, but get over it because like we can we we respect you for speaking your mind. Be kind to each other, but most of all, get along and get and do it in it. Because if they did this show with nine men or how three six nine yeah nine men. Um, from R and B that haven't been singing for a while, I guarantee you them nine men would do probably fifteen songs and an hour long concert. But when it's women and they start thinking about, oh, what what hairstyle am I gonna do? What shoes am I gonna wear? Oh, I don't like her. Uh, her she looks better than me. As soon as they start thinking like that, they take an opportunity that's been given to them to to bring their career back and to and to make money and turn it into a stupid argument and it's unnecessary because at the end of the day they're not getting any younger but if you if they're still got the talent people give them the time of day you know what i'm saying and they can bounce off of this and like you said if it comes to europe they might even be able to come to europe and perform so it's a good opportunity it's a good idea good concept so yeah dublin you've got anything you want to add to the show before i lock off the program i want to play one of my adverts I wonder, what now? Oh my God, the, he's. I'm getting criticised. I'm getting criticised by an American. Why? Jump on the panel. Jump on the panel. I've changed to Streamyard specifically because you said that um, uh, Restream doesn't work on your Android. What now is an um, R&B fan from America, and he and I were watching a live stream called "You Know I Got Soul." which has got R&B fanatics from around the world that watch interviews and watch Edward and Tom and the Chinese guy, I forgot the Chinese guy, guy's name, and Tom's the Italian guy, uh, Italian-American. It's like a multi-cultural kind of R&B panel where they just go in on all releases concerning R&B. And what what I was in the chat talking about, Whitney Houston this, Whitney Houston that, Whitney Houston this, blah, blah, blah. And then I was talking back to him saying, well, no, you can't compare Whitney Houston to, I think it was Alicia Keys. I've, com I've completely forgot the chat. And then two twos, I told him I was a YouTuber. And then I said, well, whenever you 
got the time to jump on the panel and talk about music, you're more than welcome. I'll give him the floor to give him his opinion. Um, let me see what he said. He's probably going to be really rude. Red, you were singing Stilo and you don't know, you don't know, on key, you should have sing background on r and <laughs> You can be the next Craig David, laugh out loud. All right, that's fine. Well, you, you're more than welcome to come in here and tell us the right key. I think you should tell us the key. Yeah. So, when are you going to jump on, Wadna? Um, we're all waiting for you. We've got people from Ireland, London, England, all over. This is your chance to sing Stilo. Come on, man. Big up, Wadna. Yeah, big up, big up. But, yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so you're going to knock off, Red, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to knock off, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock off. It's, it's, what I've noticed with the streams is we, we get people um, dipping in, dipping out. But at the yeah. same time, you do get a lot of re-watchers. And you get a lot of the people that jump in later and all that. But no, nah, we've had a good run today. Yeah, nice panel, big up. And I'm going to leave on a high note. I'm going to play one of my ads. Um, and then I'm going to shut off the stream with a countdown. So the next advert that's going to be played is for Brave. Brave. Brave Awards. There'll be two adverts and then we'll be cut cutting off. Let me just check this last message. I've got five minutes. Jump on, jump on. If you're going to come on, jump on for five minutes and then at least say hello. Say hello. Tell us what the time of day is in your part of America, what the weather's like, and then we can talk another day. Jump on. Mm. He said he's got five minutes. That's all good. Five minutes is all it takes. I'll give you, I'll share the link. Let me just get the invite. It's in the description. I'm just copying and pasting it into the chat just in case you need it there. I think I pinned it to the top. Um... I'll still play the advert either way because um, this advert for break. Yeah, if he jumps on, then time yeah. If he jumps on, yeah. yeah. Want to get paid for surfing the internet? Download the Brave browser and you can earn free cryptocurrency today. Securely surf the internet using the Brave VPN and earn basic attention tokens from watching up to six Brave adverts an hour as you browse the internet. Brave is the perfect way to earn BAT crypto without using cash. Transfer your BAT coins into your Uphold or Binance wallet. Tip Brave content creators like myself using your BAT coins. Download today and earn free crypto for free. And we're going to do a, one, two more adverts. Want to earn free crypto? Well, you can with Block Reward. Download Block Reward today using my referral code below this video and you can earn free Block Reward points that you can convert into 17 cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash and XRP. Earn rewards from completing surveys, playing computer games, watching videos and shopping on partner websites. Earn interest on your block reward balance by logging in daily to earn more block rewards and referring your friends. Join today using my block reward referral code and take advantage of the free crypto. Transfer your rewards into your Uphold wallet and diversify your portfolio for free today. Just doing a quick safety check. Is that what? what now? please? Yeah, this is me. Yeah. What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing very fine. Good. And congratulations for jumping on the panel. There you um, go, Browski. Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's Dublin. Up? Please say hello to Dublin. Dublin's from Dublin. Um, Peace, Dublin. Um, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, would you just, um, did you just finish your shift at work? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I'm just taking a break. I'm just taking a break. Okay. What's the time um, in your part of the world? The uh, six or... 6.08 p.m. I'm in um, the United States. So it's getting close to nighttime over here where I'm at. So is it um, in New York time, Eastern time? New York, New York. LA? New York, oh, New York wow. time. You're from New York? No, um, no, New Jersey, which is like yeah, 20 New minutes. Jersey, 20 New minutes Jersey. close to New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're in the same state as Wendy Williams, Queen Latifah, Little Kim. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, matter of fact, um... I'm from the same city as Whitney Houston in New Jersey. Yeah, so. New York, New York, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Okay. Have you met Pamela Long from Total? Have you ever bumped into her? Um, I have not, but I heard stories about her. I have, I have, I have heard stories about her. Good uh, the, I heard one, one bad story from what Wendy Williams said that she used to work at a radio station in New York called Hot 97. And then from what she said, they said the group Total was going to go to Hot 97 and just jump her because she kept talking about them. But Total said that wasn't true. Well, from what I heard. I think um, Wendy Williams was insinuating or implying that Puff Daddy may have been a bit more on a kind of, um, let's say, a liberal agenda when he was hitting the nightclubs and going out and um, chatting. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been hearing, yeah, yeah. I've been hearing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I've been hearing that for, um, year, for years. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's, tr it's probably is true, but I don't know, but. A lot of celebrities say the same thing, so it might be. I don't know. Well, I know that when he went to Ireland, um, he had a fight with um, an Irish singer called Shane Lynch, who was married to a black singer. Well, Shane Lynch was from Boyzone, and he was dating a singer called Esther from a group called Eternal. Yep. And Puff Daddy was trying to get all comfortable with um, his missus. So Shane Lynch basically tore the club up because it was wow you know, I, yeah, I, never, wow. Yeah, you know, wow. I never heard of that that story before yeah famous story and shane lynch wow. is quite tall and he he, 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 he he drives race cars and he's quite religious and all that so he once he loses his time, oh wow it's not something nice to eat but yeah so, i'm gonna look um, that story up because i never i never heard of that before that story yeah, yeah, yeah that's standard that's standard so it's mm -hmm. six in the evening in new york new jersey so yeah, I need to remember that for the future if I'm gonna go live and I need to catch. Yeah, because I think um I think London is six hours. I think London is like six or seven hours ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Have you watched any episodes of the Encore? Actually, it's funny you said that. I haven't. I haven't. But um, somebody else that I was watching yesterday, yesterday said it's a good show and I should check it out. I heard about it. From the R and B podcast, they was talking about it, but I didn't get a chance to. I'm gonna try to catch it this weekend because I heard it's very good. I'm telling you, episode one, I'm gonna um, try to remember the subject. So episode one's called "Let the Music Play," and I've just I'm just gonna read one line descriptions of each episode. So it comes out every Wednesday on BET, and if you're in England, oh, okay. or if you're somewhere else, you can watch it illegally on YouTube. Um, episode one, Let the Music Play, is kind of breaks down the synopsis. So you've got nine singers in the house. You've got Shamari DeVoe from Black, Irish Grinstead, Lamisha um, Grinstead from 702, Nivea, who's a solo artist, Felicia King and Fallon King from Cherish, Pamela Long from Total, Aubrey O'Day from Benny Kane, <coughs> and Keely Williams from 3LW and the Cheetah Girls. And the concept of the show is that these nine women have to come together to record an EP and perform a one-off performance, live performance or recorded performance for the fans at the end of the season, live 30 days in the same house and, and produce a record with um, producers, songwrite and sing and do the harmonies. But also they've got to get along and they've got to kind of um, structure the project. So I can see this series developing into a maybe six or to ten seasons i think it's a i can see I, yeah I can, I can see that because um, when you have that many women in one house it's gonna be a lot of drama you know people like drama for tv so but can you imagine if they did it with like tank and um mario winnis and um, that, uh, that actually that, that that actually that actually should be that that actually um will be a good show maybe i might pitch that to be to yeah, make I it happen the, that'd be a good i think I think after season one, they might do a male, a male version. I can see that happening. And yeah, I, but I wonder, I wonder who's going to be on it, though. That'd be a, a good thing. That'd be a good thing. I don't know. Loads, loads of people. Um, Silk, people from Silk. Um, uh, obviously, you know, Silk are mint condition. Okay, okay. I thought, okay, okay. I thought we could see, I thought we could see Avant, Avant there. Yeah, yeah. King, yeah. Donnell Jones, Jenny yeah, Wine. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be a yeah. I might have to. I might have to um ask email BET about that. That'd be a good show. Do do that. Do that. Do that. I'm sure <laughs> they're gonna do it because the the producers are um everything's gone viral. Everything's gone viral with this show. Like totally online. 
there's teams, there's people taking teams or favourites. There's favouritism going on online. So see, episode one, it says, after the group of nine um, learns that they only have 30 days to form an R&B super group and cut the record, the ladies start assessing each other and divisions appear when Aubrey forms a small clique. And then episode two is titled, Time to be Queen. And the one word description says, the women elect a queen to reign okay. over the group decisions. Pamela makes a surprising declaration about her past. Lamisha confronts the twins, <coughs> and everybody wonders what Keeley's role really is. And um, do the record, episode three. As the women start to work on their album, it's clear that not everybody shares the same vision or drive, creating divides within the group. And the one I watched today on BET earlier, um, episode four, question, questionable queen. As the women try to put their drama aside and come together to help Pamela record her gospel song, Avery has a different plan. Keely sets her side, sights on becoming queen of the house. And it looks like they've got um, episode five called Heavy is the Head. I'm not going to read that out because I haven't watched it and I don't think it's coming okay. until next okay. week. That show kind of reminded me of um, another show that they had similar to this. That was called um, R&B Divas, where they had like Similar people like they had um little Mo on there, Cla Claudette Ortiz, yeah. who else? Um, yeah. a few um, other Monifor, people. Um, Chantel Monifor, Moore. Chantel Moore, Monica was on it, and um Kelly Price. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know Monica was on it. Wow. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Monifa. Monifa. Oh, Mom. Oh, Monifa. Oh, okay, Monifa. Okay, I thought Monica. Okay, okay, yeah. It was similar to that, and then it was a lot of drama, and then the like it was so much like it was hard for them to put something together, but they did at the end. So, uh, yeah, it should be I good though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. I wasn't really happy with R&B divas because I think the way that they treated Latavia Robeson, I wasn't really feeling that because she came from Destiny's Child and she, I felt like they could have done a lot more with her, but it just <coughs> came across a bit. I don't know. It didn't come Boy. across right. It didn't come across right. Yeah, I kind of, well, I don't know, because for some reason, ever since Destiny's Child, Latavia and Latoya always get the short end of the stick, saying, oh, they can't sing, they didn't contribute nothing to the group, or nothing. But if you look at it, to me, it was, the best thing in that group, to me, is Latoya and Kelly. To me. Why did you say me. that? You've got to give your reason. So, cause remember, because remember, there could be someone listening to you that doesn't agree, so you've got to explain that as well. <laughs> To me, Kelly Rowland's voice is like to me it's more stronger and it's more melodic and it has like a choir feel when she sings versus Beyonce. Beyonce is good too, but she doesn't have to me, she doesn't have the same vocal texture, inflections, and like wow, I got for you just good. don't feel you don't feel that Beyonce's voice is soulful. But remember, Trick Daddy said that Beyonce can't sing and he got his whole restaurant in Florida got it got boycotted. You know what I'm saying? So like, Oh no I'm not saying I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that because them them bumblebees will yeah, for you. Yeah 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 those the the, the the beehives sting yeah. and I don't want to get stung. So I take that back. Beyonce could sing but to me that's my opinion Kelly Rowland and Latoya are the best singers in the group and I stand by that. That's my decision. All right cool I'll let you have that. I'll let you have that. For me, what I think in terms of like Beyonce as a singer, I think she's a good pop singer and she can do like the gospel and all that. Um, from the first album, Destiny's Child, I think she's all right with that kind of vibes. But I think Latoya's could have been a better singer, but when she came out of the music industry, I think it knocked her confidence a lot. So she's got talent. But in the industry, you need to have a strong team behind you to, to help you kind of get to that level. Do you know what I mean? Where Yeah. You, yeah, you, you have to have a them. big backing. You have to have yeah. a big backing behind you. And to her, her, yeah. her record label, I feel like they're just not... The label she's been with haven't managed her career in the way they should have. Because anyone who's worked with Beyonce should get big funding. 
should have big budget videos and big live it, tours. Exactly. Like I like I said before, a, a Marie a Marie came close and she was on the same label with Beyonce. She came close, but since Beyonce maybe kind of saw her as a threat, I guess she had to steal her sound. So we yeah, see we see how that went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. he Remember, she had that deep. Roland went to number one first before Beyonce started working with Rich Harrison. Remember that. Kelly Holt. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about I'm talking about I'm talking about Amory. Amory. That was Amory's producer. But in I'm saying in house, in house in the group Destiny's Child, there was war. It was a war. Can you imagine if you're the lead singer of a group, and the second lead singer of your group goes to England or the UK? And gets to number one with um, Patti LaBelle and Nelly. Um, what was the name of that song? Patti oh, LaBelle, the, uh, the couple. I know that. I know that. Uh, Nelly, Nelly, let me see. Uh, dilemma, I need, dilemma, wait, it's, dilemma. 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 Yeah, yeah. Dilemma. Yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, she had stole the rock and roll hit in America. So she, Kelly Rowland, came out with a number one single, number one. I think it's very successful leap into solo career. Go it leaving the group first. Beyonce did this Austin Powers soundtrack. She was acting in Hollywood. She was um trying to put together this album and she had to go back into the studio and re-record. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's when she came across Rich Harrison, Amory's producer. You get it? Yeah, yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying if you're gonna bite off somebody at least, try to get them semi credit. Don't just try to steal it like this yours, like you invented it. I just hate people like that because there's no originality in that at all. Yeah, but A. Marie was a hit. The thing with A. Marie, that that first single she had, Why Don't We Fall In Love, yeah, um, it was a big hit. But obviously, being A. Marie's first single and her first stab at success, she didn't have the, the same relationships with the record labels that Beyonce would have had from being in the music industry like a good 10 years before yeah you know what i'm saying so she could walk into studios and say play me that song you know what i'm saying that yeah yeah and one thing yeah one thing one thing was big i remember when it dropped back in um what is it was it i think spring or summer of 2004 or 2005 it was my type big i mean big it, like bt kept playing it every Hour, every hour, every hour, and radio kept playing it every thirty minutes. It was big, and I forgot the I forgot the song that Beyonce dropped after, on the on the very first thing off a B Day album. What was that? I forgot. Was it Ring the Alarm or Deja Vu? That song sounded just like one thing. I was like, that beat sounds familiar, and I looked it up, and she worked with Richard Richard Rich, um, Emery was produced. I was like, now I get it. I'm just gonna do a screen share of A Marie so people know who we're talking about. Um, the ones that tune in. I'm gonna just stop that screen share for the encore. We're just extending the show for a little bit longer whilst we just talk music because I've got my. Mind. Uh, I only got like four minutes. Only got four minutes left. Four minutes. That's fine. Me too. Me too. Uh, but we've mm-hmm. got. Because okay. you brought this up, I'm just showing people what she looks like. So A Marie's on the screen there. We've got her on screen. Um. Yeah. She still she still look the same now today. That's crazy. She don't age for nothing. No. <laughs> she still look twenty five. So one thing and crazy enough, you just that's what you was talking about. The influence between the two songs. So yeah, you're right. She's um a bit of a fool. But I think one of my favourite singers that I have to shout out, um, who's one of the ones I'll shout out? Nivea, who's in the, obviously. Nivea? Uh, oh. uh, the, only, the only song I know about from Nivea is um, Don't Mess With My Man, the remix with the two twins from Jagged Edge. That was a big hit too, Don't Mess With My Man. Have you got, um, have you got Spotify? Or any Spot- Um... No, I, I don't have Spotify. I don't. And I, I should get one too. I should. Right. Go on to YouTube and search for the first album, the self titled Nivea. And you need to play. Let me find the song. I'll go and um, let me just go on. Um, I know you. I'm going to end on Nivea 
on a Wikipedia page. I'm gonna recommend you some songs, and then we'll talk, we'll talk again. In a... You Borgen, you Borgen. Borgen. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Right. You're good now. Right. So basically, I'm gonna go to Nivea's Wikipedia page, and then we're gonna we're gonna go into another. Um, I'm gonna recommend you some of a song song titles. So you can come back and watch the okay. video. You don't, have, you don't have to write it down. And then the next time we speak, we'll pick up on the music conversation in the future. No problem. So I'm just going to go onto a discography and I'm going to name the songs that you need to listen to. So we've got Nivea album, track listing. Right, so Still In Love. Do you know who T. J. Moses is? Mm -hmm. T. J. Moses cool. is singing backgrounds on that. T. J. Moses. Just wanna be, just oh, wanna be. Don't know if you got her. Oh no no no! You don't know her. Mm -mm. You need to find out Tidra Moses. Yeah, listen to her album. I'm a, I'm gonna look her up. Yeah, listen to the whole album. Then on Nivea's first album, listen to track one, still in love. Track two, ya ya ya, featuring Little Wayne. Obviously, you know track three, don't mess with my man. Then track five, you should know Laundromat with uh, R Kelly. Um, Runaway featuring Pharrell Williams and Pusha T, big tune. Um, Have Mercy, written by 702, track 11. It's got pure tracks. And then you need to go to a second album. Just going to quickly run that over. Second album, Complicated. Just getting the track listing up. Um, I, I do like I do like Complicated. I do like Complicated. Yeah, so you know that track. Okay, the remix. Okay, the original version. You, you heard both of them, yeah? Um, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, the remix. Okay, the slow, slow down version featuring the the dream. Okay. The remix featuring Little John Youngblood's sick song. Parking lot track for massive song. I can't mess with you. The clean and the dirty version. Sick song. Breathe. Amazing song. Quickie. Wicked song, Indian dance, wicked reggae vibes, no more, wicked song. The whole album, Gangster Girl, six song featuring R. Kelly. Um, like, I'm going I'm to I'm check, I'm check, I'm check it out. I'm a, I'm a check, matter of fact, this weekend, I'm going I'm to check it out. And the next time, I will talk about it. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to play out the show with an advert. Yeah. And then I'm going to say, hop on. Maybe Saturday nights might be better to do music reviews. Sa Saturday um, Saturday night. Uh, let me see. I work. Let me see. If we could do it, maybe if you come on, maybe like around like four or five o'clock in the afternoon when I'm free. So New York time. time. Would that be British time? That's, uh, <laughs> let me see. We'll if it's four o'clock. Okay, let me see. If it's four o'clock in, in New York, it will be, let me see, probably... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think like like ten or eleven o'clock British time. At night. Yeah, at night. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So evening thing. That's that's simple. That's simple. So if I come around about if I come on at around half nine and just stay on, then we could probably do go um toe to toe with a music clash or we could talk we could do an in depth music stream and yeah, that'll be lit. No no problem, no problem. Yeah, no problem. We go through some R and B, R and B albums, R and B joints from the nineties and two yeah, thousands. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, needs no. to be done. So I'm, no I'm glad you jumped on. I'm gonna play yeah, the yeah. show out with an advert for an app that I've um, downloaded off the app store, which gives you um, free crypto for walking, free money, and then you can give yourself gifts throughout the year or the month or the day and buy yourself a nice little. All right, all right. It was fun talking to you. I gotta go. Um, yeah, yeah I'll see you Saturday. Four or five o'clock because I'm free on Saturday all the way till seven thirty p.m. my New York time. So I'll message just, you. We'll, if, work if, it out. we'll stay in communication okay. on a message. But I'm gonna play. Okay, if I see, um, have a good evening. Okay, if I see you, if I see you on the um R and B pod, pod, the you you know you got so podcast. Well, um, I send you my email. Yeah, no, my email's on my about. Go to the about section on my profile. Okay, then I'm gonna email. Then I'm gonna email you. No problem. Child at gmail .com. I'll speak to you Okay, soon. I should email you by tomorrow. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Watch the All right, take care. Peace. Take it easy. Do you want to get paid for walking? Of course you do. And you can start earning sweat coin today by using my referral link. 
the Sweatcoin app pays you to stay healthy and it pays to walk. Earn one Sweatcoin for every 1,000 steps you take throughout the day using your mobile phone. Earn your 20 minute double step bonus alongside watching free Lucky Dip video adverts a day to earn free sweat coins. Bid for high value health and fitness equipment with a year's worth of footsteps or treat yourself or loved ones to affordable health related gifts each month. Use your sweat coin for discounts on clothing and other products. Get free trial subscriptions for music and audiobooks. Download the app onto your phone using my referral link today. Once you have installed the app, click on the link again to activate the referral. Earn extra sweat coins for being the first to refer your friends and family to Sweatcoin. Want to earn free crypto? Well, you can with Block Reward. Download Block Reward today using my referral code below this video and you can earn free Block Reward points that you can convert into 17 cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash and XRP. Earn rewards from completing surveys, playing computer games, watching videos and shopping on partner websites. Earn interest on your block reward balance by logging in daily to earn more block rewards and referring your friends. Join today using my block reward referral code and take advantage of the free crypto. Transfer your rewards into your Uphold wallet and diversify your portfolio for free today. Want to get paid for surfing the internet? Download the Brave browser and you can earn free cryptocurrency today. Securely surf the internet using the Brave VPN and earn basic attention tokens from watching up to six Brave adverts an hour as you browse the internet. Brave is the perfect way to earn BAT crypto without using cash. Transfer your BAT coins into your Uphold or Binance wallet. Tip brave content creators like myself using your BAT coins. Download today and earn free crypto for free. So yeah, this the moment where I just say goodbye, didn't want to just lock off the stream like that. I'm going. Thank you for the um, conversation. And um, yeah, basically, thank you to Suzanne Brown, Dubs, Wanda, Wadna, uh, everybody, Paul O'Neill, the whole chat, please replay the chat, you can, um, I'll be um, time stamping everybody's entrance on the panel, so if you want to play back your part of the conversation, you can just click in the description box and you'll be time stamped there. It's been an amazing night, everybody get some rest now for the new day and hopefully I'll be back tomorrow at a similar time in the afternoon and those that want to jump on will be more than welcome to jump on. It's been amazing. Have a good night. Goodbye.